All right. Hello, everyone. Uh, I am Gymnast 86 here to run Skyward Sword All Dungeons for you guys today. Uh, Co-commentating with me, I have a uh, beloved community member, Copernicus, if you want to say hello. Hey, I'm a router and glitcher, um, Kishanter of this uh, game, and I'm really excited to showcase All Dungeons. Right, so uh, the All Dungeons category, as the name implies, we will be completing all of the dungeons in this game. Uh, those being Skyview Temple, Earth Temple, Linnea Mining Facility, Ancient Cistern, Sandship, Fire Sanctuary, and Skykeep. Uh, so we will be completing all of those, not necessarily in that order. Uh, and then we will have to go and beat Demise, and if the current uh, donation goal keeps going at the rate it's going, I will have to do that blindfolded. So that should be a lot of fun. <laughs> um, but yeah, so with that out of the way, um, a little bit of more pre-run information. This run is done on the Japanese version because the Japanese version saves a ton of time just purely on text alone. Um, and interestingly, this run actually starts with hero mode files in slots one and two uh, of the three slot selection that we have here. That is for a very specific reason, which we will get to later. And we're also going to be starting this run on file two, actually. So. Uh, do we have the uh, file name Bid War Winner ready? Because I believe that should have been closed by now. Let me just give you one last refresh on that. If it will load. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Our winner is the one, the only, Hank. That's H A N K. Hank. All right. Not to be confused with anything that sounds similar. <laughs> yeah, definitely not, yeah. All right, congratulations, Hank. You're about to go on an epic adventure uh, where you will be dying a lot. I'm very sorry. <laughs> but uh, now that Hank is ready to go, uh, I believe we are ready to start. So in three, two, one, go. All right, so... Uh, one of the main reasons that this run is done on hero mode is because the hero mode uh, version of the Skyward Sword playthrough allows you to skip cutscenes, which saves a lot of time. So obviously we want that advantage. Uh, there's a couple other advantages, which we'll get into later, but the by far biggest one is just being able to skip cutscenes. So the first thing we're actually going to do is we're going to go over and we're going to talk to Fledge right here. Uh, we don't really care about what Fledge has to say, but we just want the game to remember the fact that we talked to Fledge, uh, because the game sets a specific bit in memory for keeping track of the fact that we've talked to Fledge, and there's going to be a bunch of memory manipulation, actually a lot of memory manipulation that goes on in this run. So, uh, and we're going to be getting into that fairly quickly here, uh, just after we finish talking to Professor Horwell here and going through his tutorial on making sure that we know how to use Z-targeting. If you want to explain what's going to happen, Pepper. Yeah, so the main idea is going to be to um, get a lot of these bits set that we really need. Um, so sometimes we'll, we'll do actions that might seem a little bit random, like talking to Fledge there in other situations, but it all will come useful once we um, start using the trick that's going to come up here. So first we're going to save um, here and then we're going to jump off the post up there, up the bridge, and take damage intentionally and also dying intentionally. I insert joke about dying or something. Um, yeah, oh no, I'm so <laughs> bad at this video game. Yes, so no. Jim, what it's are you doing? It's uh, actually very convenient that this post up here just happens to be high enough to take damage off of, if we can run up it, of course. Went around yeah. it a little too much there. And then you can also see like another usefulness of hero mode, because we actually take double damage from everything. So this fall would usually be one damage in normal mode, but on hero mode it's going to be two damage, which is very nice, because jumping off six times is a lot more annoying than just three. Can I actually run up the post this time? There we go. Alright. Link is dead. Or I guess Hank in this case, but... 
I don't know how to okay, so now um, we're going to be activating this glitch known as Back in Time, where I'm going to be continuing from the game over screen, and then I'm going to reset the game here using the reset prompt on the home menu button. Uh, and this is going to essentially drop Link into the title screen. So this is the title screen, and this is the Back in Time glitch, uh, which we will be using a lot this run. Because on the title screen, uh, we have the ability to both control Link while we have the ability to select our save files, right? And it turns out that you can do some pretty crazy things when you have the ability to control Link and select your save files at the same time. Because our save files, when we select them, actually load data uh, into the game as we select them. So uh, we will be doing a bunch of fun things with this. First thing we're going to do is a trick called a bit save, where we're just going to save uh, our file onto the title screen map here that will be important in just a minute. And then uh, if you want to explain uh, what we're doing up here, Pepper. Yeah, so what we're going to do here is we want the Farron pillar on our files, um, but on a file too, but we don't want um, the tunic, which usually would happen after you watch the Farron pillar cutscene. So on this nice layer that we entered, the title screen layer, the goddess statue is actually open, so we can just enter here and get our goddess sword in, in back in time. Use it to uh, open the pedestal and place the Farron tablet, or the Emerald tablet, what's it called? And then we're going to um, start a file and then activate a flag right after that, or shortly after that. And that flag is actually going to carry over to our actual game file. So everything we do here don't get saved or anything, but everything we do shortly after we start a file actually will get applied to our file. Um, and note that Gymnast sometimes starts very late into loading zones. That's not part of that, what I just explained. It just saves a few frames there because uh, the game loads quicker when you start right before the loading zone goes through, but it doesn't start a file. It's just uh, uh, it loads it faster. So here, the Farron Pillar is going to, like the cutscene of the Farron Pillar is going to appear. And the flag for the Farron Pillar being um, there is going to set like shortly after the camera, camera change. So he's going to wait for the camera change and then start the file. And everything that happens after, every flag that gets set afterwards, will get put on our file. And now this file has the Farron Pillar. You can see that the Farron Pillar is just right there. It's a little hard to see because of how washed out the colors are right now, because this is the title screen version of the Skyloft map, which very conveniently happens to have the Goddess statue open, uh, which is nice for routing, because it means that we can just go get the Goddess Sword now. Uh, so as Pepper explained, we essentially want to have the Farron Pillar activated, but we don't want to have the Hero's Tunic yet. Now, normally when you activate the Farron Pillar, you're forced into, like, uh, a bunch of cutscenes, uh, which eventually give you the Hero's Tunic. Uh, and we don't want the Hero's Tunic because the flag that gives you the Hero's Tunic is also a flag that, like, progresses the game's story in a way that we don't want right at the moment. Uh, so, with that glitch uh, in Back in Time that we just did, we were able to get the outcome that we wanted of the Farron Pillar, but no Hero's Tunic. It's also to note the reason why we were on this washed up layer there after we started our file is because we bit saved in that back in time section, which means we'll just be put where we bit saved um, after we start our file, which was that place and the, type, the layer there. Right, and I had, uh, this is a little bit unrelated, but I should also mention that I am a little bit sick right now, so you might hear me cough or sniffle or, uh, you know, do stuff like that because I am sick, so... But not sick enough to, like, not do it. So just a heads up, I suppose. So now... So anyway, we, now we're, yeah. uh, we're sort of going to continue with, like, the normal way that you do Skyloft, except we have the Goddess Sword. Um, and this is going to enable us to skip having to get the Training Sword from the Sparring Hall, which is a nice little time save. So we go down to Bruce here. Yeah, maybe a good time to talk about stamina management. Yeah, so stamina management, um, for the most part, it's pretty simple. You generally just want to, uh, if you use up all of your stamina, you want to let the first quarter of the stamina meter refill and then just use up the first quarter over and over again, basically, because the first quarter uh, depletes at only half the rate of the last three quarters. Of course, that's if, like, if you're running a long time without any stamina fruit, there's a lot of stamina fruit on Skyloft, so that doesn't really apply here. Um, 
And you also see me doing a bunch of rolling. Uh, generally, every roll that we do, uh, essentially in place of sprinting, only saves about a frame. Uh, but it does use more stamina, so generally we only want to roll if we have the extra stamina to spare. Or if we're, like, you know, rolling into a cutscene, like, right there. Yeah, so as you can see, we want to obviously save our Loftwing in order to call our Loftwing. Uh, otherwise, we can't really get to the sky. But we actually want to get a file to the sky that's before saving the Loftwing, which is gonna be a little bit more complicated. Um, so first, we're gonna take damage here because we want to do back in time later. So taking damage is convenient here with the Chew. And then in the outside, we're going to save and copy our file. And the reason we do it is that we have a file before saving the Loftwing. Uh, because we're about to save the Loftwing. Um, still get the cuts in here so we don't have to watch it again with the other file. And after that we'll copy. And then we have a file with uh, no Loftwing. And then the other file can get the Loftwing. Right, so essentially the file that we're trying to set up here is we're trying to set up a file which uh, has the ability to dive off of our Loftwing but has not yet saved the Loftwing. Which sounds a little bit weird, and I know it's... The beginning of this run is, like, extremely confusing, even for us. Um, yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah, so the main idea is if, if the the file before the Loftwing gets into the sky, it won't load the Loftwing tutorial that we'll see soon here, because it doesn't have to save the Loftwing, so it will just be the default sky, um, which will allow us to get a fire trigger, which uh, which activates diving. And that's basically our goal here. But for that, we have to first save the Loftwing normal. So we have at least one chance with that file to get into the sky. All right, so Loftwing tutorial is just kind of an auto-scroller, so we probably have time to read a donation right now. Wonderful, wonderful. We have $10,000 from Fangamer. Ah, Who okay. says, hey everybody, Fangamer here. It's dangerous to go alone. Take this donation made possible by everyone who has shopped the Fangamer AGDQ 2023 collection. It's not a secret to everybody that 100% of the profit from sales of GDQ merch through the end of the event supports Prevent Cancer Foundation. Buy something, will ya? Take any road you want to fangamer.com slash GDQ. Do I have time to squeeze in one more? Uh, yeah, like a quick one. Uh, Bacon Bits donates $20 and says, Take this red rupee for good luck. Well, thank you very much, Bacon Bits. All right, so coming up here, we have a trick known as the Wing Ceremony Cutscene Skip. Uh, basically, after we load in here to the cutscene before the Wing Ceremony, there's a two-frame window that I have to side hop out of the cutscene trigger. And this game runs at 30 FPS, so it's not too bad of a window. We'll see if I get it here. All right, very good. Nice. And now we're going so that to skips like a two-minute cutscene. Yeah. Uh, and now we get to one of the most complicated uses of back in time in the run. So take it away, Pepper. Yeah. So we want to go into the sky with a fire that doesn't have the love wing. So we have to use Bit because in Bit we can actually get the ability to um, jump off our love wing by just saving a fire that has the love wing saved, which we just did with our file. So. Um, Another thing we're going to do here is we're going to do something called file dupe. So we select file one. Uh, now the game thinks we have selected file one. So opening the splash screen actually get loads the information of file three, but doesn't select file three. So we can actually save the information of file three onto file one as Gymnast does right there. Um, but it still shows hero mode here, which is important. Then we save our file to here, which means we can call the loft wing. And now, um, we can do a reverse bit warp, which means we start our file and then enter a loading zone, and then the game will put us into the new loading zone. And right here, we're going to use this new hero mode file that we still have, although it has the information of file three. And this allows us to load the area normally. So we start, enter the loading zone. So now file one with the information of file three <laughs> is in the sky. And file three has not saved the lock wing, so we're in the default sky layer, meaning there's no barriers preventing us from anything, and we can get the fire trigger after we take a bit of damage here. Very nice. 
Uh, we get a side trigger here, which gives us the diving flag. So now our file doesn't have to save the lock wing, but still can die off the lock wing. The reason we took damage from the way back there is because um, uh, it's a tricky. Oh my goodness. I want to touch the way. Okay. Yeah, we want death war back um, because. Uh, while we got the diving without the loft wing, we still want to get the loft wing, and it's going to showcase why. Because diving in the loft wing tutorial is very useful, um, which we now have. We have unlocked this flag, so even in the tutorial, we can use diving, um, allowing us to get to places we're not supposed to get to um, in the tutorial. Yeah, so normally during the loft wing tutorial, there's like a you can't see it, but there's a barrier around where like the tutorial area is to prevent you from going to places like Skyloft or the Lumpy Pumpkin, for instance. Uh, and this barrier, like, uh, it doesn't extend far enough outwards that it would allow us to reach where the Farron Pillar is just on our loft wing. But the important part is that this barrier is only active while, or it's not really only active while Link is on his loft wing, but it only affects Link while he's on his loft wing. So what we're actually going to do is I'm going to do 12 flaps right here to get a certain amount of height. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. And then I'm going to wait until my loft wing hits the barrier, and then I'm going to dive off of my loft wing, uh, and then begin diving forward so we can go past the barrier and enter the Farron Pillar. But before we enter the Farron Pillar, we want to take damage again, so we're just going to splat onto this rock right here, or onto this zipper to take four hearts of damage, which is the maximum amount of fall damage you can take very conveniently. Mm -hmm. uh, and then we can just make our way over to the Farron Pillar. And this is important because this gets us into a state where we have the loft wing, we have diving, but we also are in a state where... Um, when we try to enter the sky on this specific file, the sky will still load into the Loftwing tutorial. Yeah. Uh, which is very important because the Loftwing tutorial is the only sky layer that does not crash in back in time, just due to file memory sizes. Yeah. Back in time crashes in a lot of places, and we carefully make everything so that we don't crash where we go, obviously. Um, crashing is bad for us. Um, so the sky layer, tutorial layer, very, very nice, very nice. And now we're on the seal grounds, but we're actually on uh, the layer zero, which is like the def default layer for everything, basically. Um, where there's nothing um, really here that we could progress our story with, because usually you should have the tunic here, which would set the right story here. Um, so we're gonna do back in time. <laughs> and actually um, showcase why diving in sky layer three is very useful here. Uh, we're going to... First, we want to keep um, a file right here, so we're going to copy uh, over and corrupt this file, actually, file 3. And corrupting file 3 basically means we delete it and then save it, which means the game will, gonna sa will save only zeros everywhere, uh, which includes health. And with this saving, because the file that we deleted had the loft wing before, we actually can call a loft wing. Uh, because we say with a file that has a lock wing. And then we just need to enter the sky with our nice file that we set up here, uh, which is file 1, which can dive. And then we can dive to the Farron Pillar and enter Farron uh, or Sealed Grounds in back in time, because that does not crash. Luckily, most of Farron doesn't crash. Very, very nice. And now we got to dive here. It's going to be important that we enter with file 2 into the pillar, because the map screen actually crashes back in time, so we have to always avoid the map screen. And file 2 has never entered the sealed, um, sealed grounds or Farron Pillar, so it will play the first time um, entering cutscene after we load into um, sealed grounds. And then we switch to file 1 just to avoid the cutscene here that usually would take a little bit longer where you, where there's a camera pan where you fall and then fight talks you to you. And now we're going to apply um, the flags of um, the Skyloft flags here, which will put down the log because that's talking to Fledge. So talking to Fledge puts down that log. Thank you, Fledge. Very nice. Otherwise, he couldn't escape here. <laughs> he knows the way. Um, and then we want to get into um, Fairwoods just to skip all of Seer Grounds, basically. Um, the whole 
um, we don't need any of the, anything there, so we can just skip it. We're back in time here, and the lock being down. That's our way to escape seal grounds. And so the last thing I'm going to do is we're going to turn a car around the camera here just to avoid a cutscene that would play otherwise when we select files. And we can save um, at the statue here with a normal bit save that you've seen before. So we'll be put here after we start our file. And voila, we'll be in Fernwoods. I'm sure that was all extremely easy to follow. <laughs> Very easy to understand, of course. Yeah. Mainly uh, we just yeah. uh, yeah, skipped seal grounds by going to putting your lockdown. Yeah. A bit. But yeah, so the reason that we say, uh, like, Fledge uh, put the log down for us is because um, there's, a, there's a section of memory that the game holds where uh, it loads what we call, like, the current scene flags. So uh, every sort of greater area in this game has uh, some memory space dedicated to it where it can hold up to 128 individual event flags for, like, a specific area. Um, and whichever area we're currently in is the area... Uh, which the game loads in the event flags for, right? Uh, so there are specific flags where uh, those flags will share the exact same address in memory depending on what area you're in. So the flag for talking to Fledge uh, at the beginning of the game there is the same one uh, relatively when you're in the sealed grounds and you push down that log to open up the shortcut to the behind the temple area. Yeah. And so this is why when we loaded the Skyloft flags in the sealed grounds, the game read the Skyloft flags and was like, oh, you've talked to Fledge. So it loaded in that relative, uh, or like those relative sets of bits. And, uh, but the sealed grounds was actually interpreting that data. And so it interpreted that data as, oh, this bit is set, which means this log is pushed down now. Yeah. If that makes sense. I think in, in Elden, that's going to be another good. Um showcase for both uh, both scene flags um, but for now we'll have to get a slingshot actually um, not specifically the slingshot although it is useful but we really need the B wheel which right now we don't have so we can't press B to use items <laughs> and if we were to get an item that is not uh, the slingshot it would actually soft plug us so we're kind of forced into getting the slingshot so we're forced into saving the kikwis but hey kikwis are cute so you know. Yeah. Yeah. Unfortunately, the devs uh, hard coded the ability to use the item wheel at all uh, to also getting the slingshot. So, yeah. not a whole lot we can do about that in the speedrun. We're just kind of forced to collect the slingshot. Also, another note for uh, hero mode, as we've seen with uh, like the, Bo the Copeland fight against uh, Machi there. Um, another benefit of hero mode is actually that we have the Skyward Strike of the Master Sword um, when it comes to range and damage, which is very useful uh, because the early fights are getting basically one shot by that damage. So uh, he just has to just just has to make sure that he doesn't hit with the hilt of the sword, just with the strike. Yeah, if I'm too close to an enemy when I try to use the uh, overpowered Skyward Strike, the game will prioritize the enemy getting hit by the actual sword, which is just the goddess sword, so it doesn't do as much damage. Yeah. Which is why, for instance, uh, in this bit right here, I'm going to roll and then run away as I'm charging uh, this Skyward Strike here, and then turn around so that uh, my sword doesn't hit them. Oh. Darn it. Almost. There's a, like, really... It's kind of silly, uh, like one second time saver you can get there if you bonk into the tree on a specific frame. Yeah, looks very funny, but it's uh, frame perfect, I think, or almost so, you know. Hard to get, but we can knock um, Lobster down now. Well, so we're pretty much just going to go around uh, collecting the rest of the Kikwis, so we can probably rattle off some donations now. Perfect timing. I do have some Kikwi-relevant donations for you. <laughs> Excellent. We have $15 from Nat, who has written you a poem, Jim. Uh, Roses are red, violets are blue. May all of your splits be blue, too. The entirety of the Jim Chords with you, Jim. Good luck, have fun, slash bombs, and enjoy the title screen. Pepper, Pippi, you two have an amazing time too. And remind Jim about the log. 
For anyone who hasn't seen this, put on your seatbelts. You'll need them. Go Jimbo, go. We Thank also you very have... much, Nets. Oh, I'm sorry. We also have $50 from Spicy Quill, who says... Hi, Jim. Good luck on your reverse bit. Magical run. Excellent. Time for any more? Yeah, we can do one more. I have $30 here from Juliet, who says, It's way past my bedtime, but still want to watch the Skyward Sword run. Oh, well. Thanks to all the participants for this fantastic event. You're all doing a great job. Let's get this one million. And of course, good luck to you, Jim. Thank you very much. All right, so thanks to Nat, I did remember to push the log down. Um, <laughs> it, was, it was that log right there that she was referring to. Um, it is a very important log to push down uh, yeah, we'll for something that'll be hour. happening in you know, like an hour. Yeah. Because <laughs> once but again, this run is basically just all about like setting up uh, the memory in like a very intricate way so that we can get through the game as fast as possible with all of the back in time shenanigans that are possible to do. Because we haven't seen all of what it can do yet. As a router, it's really a beautiful puzzle in the end. Um, very fun. Uh, especially old dungeons, there's so many um, ways you can go about it. Um, yeah, on the uh, on the wrap dock that I have open right now, just to make sure I like do everything correctly, there's like I think nine different tabs of route <laughs> ideas or something yes. ridiculous like that. <laughs> yes, and all so, of them are cool, but this yeah, one is the fastest. <laughs> as far as we know, this one is the yes, fastest. Yes, as far as we know, of course. All right, so this yes. is Buka. Um, he's going to give us the slingshot. And then once we get the slingshot, we will be able to make our way down to our first dungeon, Skyview Temple. Hey. Actually doing what the category says. Yeah. And so on our way down to Skyview Temple, um, there's this trick that I'm going to be attempting to do called an extended blow. Uh, and it's a really flashy trick, looks really cool. Unfortunately, it is... Um, RNG based, so whether or not it actually works only has like a 20-ish percent chance. Um, basically what's going to happen is I'm going to attempt to knock a Bacoblin over a very specific position on a ledge. And this is random because the distance that Link knocks back a Bacoblin, uh, the way that the game does the calculation is that there's like a base distance that the Bacoblin gets knocked back. And then it uh, like rolls a random number between 0 to 40 to add to that knockback distance. So uh, the range uh, at which like the position that we want the Bacolvin to be in works is only like 10 of those units-ish. I don't think anyone knows what the like exact range is, but yeah. that's roughly what it is. Uh, so hopefully we get that. And if it, if it does succeed, you'll, you'll yeah, it's, yeah, it's very clear when it succeeds. Yeah, and first for that, we'll have to um, stun the first Bokoblin with the Slingshot because he would otherwise um, call all the Bokoblins to move. And we want the one Bokoblin we want to jump off to stay in, spot, in the spot. So we'll stun the first Bokoblin and then stun the second Bokoblin that we want to use to do the extending blow. Okay, so this guy, so that guy has to get stunned. And this guy has to get stunned so that he stays in a consistent position. And see if this works. Uh, uh, unfortunately not. The goblin went too far. Now you can see cube warp. But yeah, now instead we get to show off a different trick. Uh, called cube warp. So this trick, uh, there's a goddess cube you can kind of see up there uh, in front of the Goron. And what we're going to be doing here is we're going to try to... Um, Aim Link's Skyward Strike upwards using this Bacoblin so that the Skyward Strike travels upwards over the ledge and hits the Goddess Cube. And this is going to be a bit tricky here with this camera angle. Okay. Nice. Okay. Yeah. Also, only possible because of the longer Skyward Strike that we have in Hero Mode. So very nice. We don't have to go all the way around the Deep Woods. It's a very uh, long path to actually get around. We can also skip a 5 text trigger here uh, yes. by running off of that ledge in a specific way and then doing a jump slash just to get outside of its range. 
And now we can enter the Skyview Temple. Yes. Yeah, for the first dungeons, we just want to get uh, Skyview and, and Earth Temple done to get all the pillars up. And after that, we can more freely choose our dungeons. Uh, it just makes sense to get all the pillars up before we do anything more. So, going to save right here, and whenever we save, it's very likely that soon after we're going to die. <laughs> so, this is exactly what's going to happen here. With little keys here, thank you very much for being here. Yeah, we'll try to have him like cornered a bit so he like charges quicker at us. Very nice here. Yeah, and Link's death animation is also like a little shorter, or like he he dies slightly quicker if you're in first no. person. Yeah, yeah. Also, for the rest of the back end times in the run, I didn't explain this earlier, but I'm using the reset button on the Wii console itself. Uh, to reset the game, because doing that is faster than having to go into the home menu and press the reset button. So uh, for this back in time, we're going to be doing what's called a bit warp. Uh, so first I'm actually going to do another, a different trip called bit magic, where I'm going to load file 2's flags and then bonk onto that tree to, like, actually load them in. Um, so that those effects actually get applied to this map. Uh, and that opens up this set of gates right here so that we can run through without having to void out. And this right here is the bit warp, where I'm going to save and start my file at the same time at the Upper Academy statue here. So what this does is this is actually going to spawn me in the Skyview Temple, but it's going to spawn me at the coordinates that I saved at in Back in Time with that statue. So it's sort of like uh, I was able to just jump through most of Skyview Temple without actually having to do it. Um, but it's important to note that the file, uh, my first file is technically saved at Skyloft right now. It's just that the loading process for loading the area that the file is saved in happened before the file was actually saved uh, at Skyloft. So the last place it was saved was just used, which was Skyview Temple. Mm -hmm. And the reason we got into this room right here is to reload the other room we just came from because we jumped so far ahead into the dungeon that the game did not have everything loaded yet. So by going into this uh, room transition here, back and forth, we actually load and you can see the enemies now up here and especially the rope that we need to get over appears. And I think it's also a good time to like, we talk about bit warp and reverse bit warp because we did one reverse bit warp earlier, which was, um, you know, there was a lot going on. Um, so yeah, a bit what basically t takes the coordinates from back in time and applies them to the map where our file is playing on. And a reverse bit warp is taking the coordinates from our file that we have and apply them to the map we're loading into. Um, so that's basically why there's like reverse bit warp and bit warp because it's kind of the reverse in a, in a way. <laughs> Yeah, I know we just said that if we save, we're probably going to go back in time. Um, that one back there is just a safety save, because if I accidentally die, uh, like, to gear at him, I'll oh, surprise that. That's key. Or, like, to up a code one here, we would get sent back to the beginning of the dungeon, and that would be really yeah. slow, so. It's, uh, definitely not the best, so yeah. So now we can get the boss key and beat the dungeon. Um, can actually use the vines back instead of the um, normal way that we, you would go. Um, you can just jump to the vines here and get back a bit quicker. The vines are a bit tricky, but Jim is obviously an expert, so uh, he does it easily. Same with the boss key here, it always has the same position at the start, so Jim knows how to move the Wii Remote to put it in. Nice age. Yeah, thankfully, the the boss key orientations aren't like randomized or anything, so it's just like like I know for this one I just have to go like like that, and then it'll be in the correct position. All right, time for our first boss, Girahim. So the first phase here is uh, pretty simple. We just want to bait Girahim to hold his hand one direction and then slash it from the other direction. Uh, do that just four times. And so we'll finish off phase one. We do have to wait a little bit, otherwise Girahim will try to counter us. Now for the second phase, we generally want to, uh, after we try to get off this first hit here... Okay, I know he jumped away. Darts! That's not what we want to see. There we go. That's better. So from here on out, we generally want to do slash quick spins uh, because the quick spin, or sorry, because generally um, the 
game will apply a damage multiplier to the third or higher hit that we do on Gear Him, and we want that damage multiplier to apply to the quick spin instead of like just a regular slash. So that's why we're doing these specific moves right here. Yeah. And that cuts off having to do uh, one cycle compared to doing like quick spin slash instead. Yeah. And darts are just bad. <laughs> we just don't want darts. Because yeah. They can't really Thankfully, touch. that fight wasn't actually too bad. Yes. Except the, yeah. the beginning was a little slow, but once we got past that, he just kept on doing the sword counter, which is the fastest move we can hope for. There we have it. Beat the first boss and almost uh, finish the dungeon. Just need to hit the crest and get our ruby tablet. Alright, so we will be getting this heart container, uh, otherwise we won't be able to tank some damage that we take later on, so... Uh, it is faster to get that heart container for this route specifically. Uh, also, just another, I guess, technical note. Um, at least for a lot of Zelda games, there's usually like a set definition of what it means to beat a dungeon. Um, that's not really the case in Skyward Sword, because there's kind of like... There's a bunch of dungeons that you beat in like unique ways compared to the rest of them. So like here in Skyview, for instance, we strike the Goddess Crest, or striking the Goddess Crest is what we consider beating the dungeon. Um, same thing with Earth Temple, but then like with Lanayru Mining Facility, there is no Goddess Crest, so we define beating Lanayru Mining Facility as like beating Moldorak and then opening up the door at the bottom of the boss room, for instance. And then there's also Skykeep, right, where yep. beating the dungeon, uh, we consider the dungeon beaten when you have all three pieces of the Triforce. So every dungeon is just kind of defined individually uh, in that regard. Yeah, the idea is just to stay true to having fully clear the dungeon basically yeah and there weren't the there weren't really any arguments as to like what the dungeons were like it it, it was pretty clear yeah. to everybody uh like what all the dungeons in the game are at least in the speedrunning community yeah so right here we like save and quit it there so we don't get the machi cutscene where she uh where it talks about like hey i see you again and we uh, instead started file three which is our corrupt file so it has everything set to zero meaning health as well meaning we die immediately, allowing us to do back in time, which is very nice because um, we want to get the next pillar here in this bit as well and also not get the tunic. So we're going to do the same thing with Farron, but just this time we actually need to uh, first commit the Flag of File 2 and then also with getting a rupee with File 1, we commit our inventory. So now the game in bit knows all the inventory from File 1 which includes the ruby tablet we just got. So for the Farron Pillar, that was not necessary because that's always something you can place. But um, the ruby the tablet and everything after uh, needs to be like that. And we also saved File 1 because obviously it's closer to Elden to be on Skyloft, so we would save File 1 on Skyloft. And now we just need to enter um, the Goddess statue and uh, place our ruby tablet that we just um, got for getting a rupee on file 1. And then we can do the same thing uh, we did with the Farron Pillar, which is starting shortly before the um, Elden Pillar flag sets. Um, and that allows us to get the Elden Pillar without getting the tunic, because after the first time you watch a Pillar cutscene on normal gameplay, it will always play the cutscenes afterwards, which Jim explained earlier, can be giving you the tunic. Yeah, the main reason we avoid the tunic is just um, we can s we want a lot of flags on files without the tunic, or, or one file without the tunic, um, because that's one file that we always need. Like the file we're playing on right now that can dive and has the locking tutorial, as long as we want to go to Farron and Bit, we, we have to keep that file, otherwise we won't be able to load the sky. So we want to stay without tunic as long as possible to get as many flags with this file as possible. Yeah, so now we're in the lockpick tutorial, and you can't uh, speed here with pressing A, but we still can dive, and we can actually get out of the barrier of that, and reach the zipper here, and call our lockpick into the zipper, and then the game will try to pull us back into the uh, barrier from the lockpick tutorial, though it's a little bit annoying, right? There we go. And uh, it gives us full speed of the zipper for however long you want because of that pull. So we can quickly go to the Elden Pillar here. Yeah, so doing that saves like 
10 seconds over flying yeah. to the Elden Pillar. Just conveniently, the Elden Pillar is actually uh, within like the bounds of where the Loftwing can fly, uh, but it's still just faster to do the little zipper trick. Yeah, also looks cool. And now we're going to save, so this is going to be the... <laughs> we're going to die as well. Luckily, there is a uh, Fire Chew here, which very quickly can damage us down. But for the last side, we actually want to hit the lava because that's a passive death animation. Passive yeah, death generally animation. dying on ground is like the slowest way of dying. You either want to die in lava, in water, or like over a void for like a fast death. Yeah, so the things that we want to do in Elden here is just quickly get to Earth Temple, um, but also get a few flags on the way that we need for later. Um, because we're also going to do a lot of things in Elden, because it's just a big region. And the first thing is we're going to skip like the first part of Elden here with this bit warp, which is a little bit precise, um, where we're going to be inside a goddess cube. Um, Link's going to spawn inside a goddess cube, and the goddess cube will push him out of bounds down, and this is just close to the um, magma turf, so we'll load into the magma turf, allowing us to skip like the first part of um, getting here. So because we never got the sail cloth, uh, there was no way for us to like not take damage there. We just kind of had to tank it, and that's why we got the heart container back in Skyview Temple. Yeah. Otherwise, we would have died there and had to like go through an extra game over screen unnecessarily. All right, so this is another example of uh, the Skyward Strike being overpowered. Uh, so if I group all these Bacolans together, we can just defeat them all in one Skyward Strike. So that was very good, it's pretty fast. Now we can get to the digging bits. Yeah. So the next thing in our way is going to be the Earth Temple door, um, in order to get to, into Earth Temple, um, which is going to showcase the first uh, RBM in the run, um, which is a very powerful, well, the first scene flag RBM to be correct. Um, which might be a good time actually to explain the differences um, a little bit more clearer again. There is um, basically story flags, which um, is like something like the Farron Pillar, where like all regions need to have them. It's like a global flag. And um, then there are flags like scene flags, which was like a log or talking to Fledge, which is only really for the area important. And for story flags to get them through bit, we just have to do what the game actually wants us to do, but for scene flag RBMs, that's a bit nice. Nice, nice circles. <laughs> <laughs> we <laughs> just running around in circles. <laughs> anyway, continue on, Pepper. <laughs> um, and um, for scene flags, uh, we can actually get a scene flag on Skyloft, like scene flag 33, and that's gonna mean something else in every region that we're gonna apply it to. So in Elden, scene flag 33. It's going to mean something completely different than on Skyloft, meaning that we can get stuff that we shouldn't, we're not supposed to get. Which is actually what we're going to do now. We're going to get Scene Flag 33 onto Elden. Right. And this all works because, as I mentioned earlier, the game uses the same uh, memory space to load in what the current scene flags are for whichever scene is currently loaded. Um, but be, we can sort of like. Uh, mess with that during back in time, right? So uh, when you're in back in time, uh, you start off on the Skyloft scene because that's where the game, like that's just where you are, so that's what the game loads, right? But when you select a file in back in time, the game actually changes your scene index to be whichever one that the file is saved in, right? So when I select the uh, Elden, or when I select file one which is saved in Elden right here, uh, the scene index that it chooses is actually the Elden one. Right, um, and so what we so what RBM essentially does, or reverse bit magic does, is we uh, you know we choose the file that we're going to RBM onto. In this case, file one, which loads the Elden scene index, and then as the file is fading out into actually loading, um, we can apply the scene flag that we want, which in this case is going to be the one corresponding to opening up this shed. And the game will see, ah, okay, so you're loading this specific scene flag on the Elden scene. And so then the scene flag will be active in Elden, uh, and it'll just do whatever that specific scene flag means to do in Elden. Yeah. 
And also with the next bit, we can perfectly showcase bit magic, which, you know, reverse bit magic, bit magic. Um, because in this case, we just got flag 33, which is opening the shed on file one. So now when we commit file one flags by, for example, blocking a tree or selecting the statue, then it will open the shed, right? Because we just, you know, we just saw what we did and it's basically just the reverse of it. Um, it's applying it to back in time. And uh, not only the shed flag, but every other flag that Fire One has, which um, also is the flag for the p patrol door to be open, which um, is actually talking to the magma before the bridge. So, because we did that on Elden, and now we committed that to Bit, selecting Fire One will mean that the door to patrol will be open, allowing us to enter patrol's home. Which we need to do right now. This is Petro. Um, he's very scary, so I'm going to pull up the Wii Motion Plus tutorial prompt so we don't have to see how scary he is. Whew, that was close. <laughs> we could also just get rid of the scary music by uh, opening up the file selection, which will override whatever music <laughs> is playing. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Very nice. Yeah. My so, fragile disposition, thanks you. <laughs> you're welcome. <laughs> yeah, the main reason we want to do this right now is actually we want to story flag attached to meeting with Rome, um, which means al allowing us to like collect gratitude crystals and also finish the Runa crest once we slept um, one time. And, but that's important. I mean, we don't need gratitude crystals for anything necessarily, but every gratitude crystal is also another flag that can, we can reach. And the more flags we can reach back in time, the more things we can change. And also a nice thing with this is actually the um, patrol does not only set a story flag, but also a scene flag. And then scene flag actually gets rid of the fight text after the Farin, uh, Elden um, trial, which a nice extra. We really need the story flag mainly, but it's a nice extra. Right, and so uh, specifically, we can only like so like every each time that we do one of these reverse bit magic instances, we can only get however many flags uh, that are possible to get within that last little second before the file loads. Because when you actually start the file, um, the game will like reset the scene flags for the specific area that you're loading to be what they're supposed to be for some reason. Um, so you have to, we have to wait for that to happen and then cause uh, the scene flag change for like the scene flag to actually get into the improper region. Yeah. Probably. So uh, this is real bigger. Um, Yay! <laughs> the only way to see this place is all dungeons. Um, where you can talk to this nice pal and then shoot one of his jewels. And the main reason yeah. we're here is to shoot that jewel. <laughs> Yeah, so shooting that jewel uh, activates uh, a pretty like late scene flag. It's like in the in the eighties or nineties, I think. Yeah. Um. Yeah, pretty late scene flag, which we will use in like an hour. <laughs> It'll come back later. Don't worry. Yeah. It'll be very cool when it comes back. But yeah, we always kind of meme on how uh, this run enters Thrill Digger because not even the 100% speed run enters the <laughs> yeah. Thrill Digger mini game. It's not really a reason to go there, but uh, the jewel was. The jewel very is cool. very powerful. Yes. And now all that's left is going up to Earth Temple. And by the way, the opening shed on Skyloft, we didn't specifically say, corresponds to the door to Earth Temple being open. So this makes this cutscene even more funnier than normal. Yeah, how do you get into Earth Temple right there? It's a very tough question. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> Look the camera pan. <laughs> mm. The camera's like it. You know, you know, magmas that the doors open. Yeah, just just go there. Anyway, uh, while this cutscene is finishing, probably have time for a donation or two. Wonderful, wonderful. We do have a one hundred dollar donation from J Dude. 
who says, Hi Jim, good luck on the run, and thank you for having such a great and welcome community that supports you. Donation goes to that blindfolded demise, and I will donate an additional $25 for circles for a guaranteed PB. I believe we did get circles, so yeah, um, we did indeed get circles. Looking for that. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> we also got ten dollars from Joshua Fe8, who says, "Oh no, we have less than four hours, and Zelda has gone missing. Let's hope we get her back in time." Uh, Best of luck, Jim. <laughs> You're pretty cool. <laughs> Thank you very much, Joshua and J Dude. All right, so right here, um, we're going to be doing this weird trick. Uh, we didn't mention it earlier, but uh, we didn't get the beetle in Skyview Temple. So to circumvent that requirement here, uh, we're going to be trying to do this trick called the Key Seat, where we once again use an enemy to aim our Skyward Strike upwards, so that I can cut the rope that's up there near where the bridge uh, lowers down. Yeah. And thankfully, the Keys was pretty cooperative, only took uh, two tries to get it to line up at the right angle. Yeah, the problem is only you have only one try, because the Keys will die after you use the Skyward Strike, so yeah, you have to have a good setup. Surprisingly, it's not actually that difficult to manipulate that piece. Like, you'd think, like, oh, the keys just flies around very randomly, but the keys will actually stay within, like, a pretty specific range of wherever you're facing, which is why we didn't target it until I had to actually uh, do the Skyward Strike itself. Mm. Anyway, we're saving again, so you all know what that <laughs> means. Yay. I'm to do back in time again. And this time, we're actually going to get uh, some more use out of our corrupt file. Yes. So, you remember earlier that Pepper explained that the corrupt file is basically just all zeros, because it happened when we attempted to save a file that was being deleted. Deleted file is all zeros, and so now it's just saved as all zeros. Uh, but because it's all zeros, that also means that uh, it doesn't have any story flags on it, which is very important because we want to load the Knight Academy for this uh, specific instance of back in time without any story flags, because that'll load us into the default layer of the Knight Academy, uh, which is the only place that we can perform the RVM that we want to perform here. Yeah. Or at least this specific uh, type of it. Yeah. Going to talk with Pippet, and Pippet is, uh, you know, only giving us this text when we are at the very start of the game. So we want that text, so we talk, we go in with 5 3 here which is actually going to raise the bridge to the second part of Earth Temple, skipping like the whole lava section and moving the peg there. But it's not right away. Um, some actors are just different. They need like a reload. Um, it's just what the game needed it to be. Some can immediately change uh, and some need like a reload. So we'll need to reload for that to be there. And we also need the bomb back, so. That's where we're going right now. Yeah, didn't quite get far back enough there. Um, if I threw the bomb from the correct distance, I could have skipped this uh, like little camera cutscene. Yeah. That's fine, so like a few seconds. And also another cutscene here that we can uh, skip with the slingshot by hitting the uh, Los Alfos. They will not have the animation where they like attack you. Or, like. I don't know, look angry at you, move towards you. So we can immediately start the fight. Well, we just basically want to knock them back and um, do them yeah, so with a final blow. That was, that was about as good as RNG as you can hope yeah. for. Because yeah, ideally, the Lazapos will do the big jump back and try to like shoot fire at you. And when they do that, they're just completely vulnerable. So I can just walk up and knock them back with a quick spin. Yeah. Now we have the bomb bag. Yeah. Well, we obviously, we'll give it back. Uh, yeah, of course, yeah, we're, we're going to yes. give it back. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, bombs are very nice. Um, just it allows us to die quicker. Um, there's certain points where bombs are just very convenient. And it's just very quick to get, so we get it. Hey, now we get him. We get some booms. 
All right, so after we get the five bombs here, we're just going to immediately die uh, into the lava beside us, uh, because this is how we're going to reload uh, the Earth Temple for the RBM we did to raise the bridge to actually take effect. And this also spawns us near it anyway, since the last place that we saved was the statue in the middle. Yeah. Still have to watch the cutscene as if we pushed it up, though, so the game's like, hey, good job, you did it. <laughs> And then I'll also just get a quick Deku Seed refill right here. Yeah, we actually need a lot of seeds. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's, it's very funny, but uh, the main reason why we use a lot of seeds is that I mean, you've seen it with the Jewel, for example, or other places. A lot of uh, slingshot targets are in the game. And yeah, that's very nice for committing flags or getting flags. Um, so having the slingshot has that added bad benefit. All right, so here there's uh, the game normally wants you to like go to the right more and like blow up an alcove that gives you a rest stop for this uh, ramp right here. But we can actually do this technique called stutter sprinting, where I sort of just repeatedly uh, let go of the A button for a little bit as I'm sprinting up here to conserve stamina, and we can easily conserve enough that we can just make it to the top without having to use the rest area at all. Yeah. Also, when the the like right now, when the stamina meter is red, like right now for a moment there, that means that he got the uh, first frame after a cutscene where he didn't have stamina before. So that means he did a good job <laughs> getting the first. Yeah, frame. it means that my my roll was frame perfect. Yes. Starting the movement. Now we're going to start fighting the boss. Technically. Yeah, d depending on how you think about it, the boss yeah. fight starts like right now. <laughs> Yeah, so it's pretty easy to avoid uh, getting rolled over by the boulder, at least right there. But the boulder will come back. Mm. Alright, so now we're just going to basically open up the boss door and make our way to Skaldera. Actually, I guess Skaldera will follow us in there. Um, <laughs> but yeah, so we have time to read maybe like two or three donations. Wonderful. We have $50 from... The King's Bride, who says, Oh, hey, there's an incentive for Snake Eater? Well, we've got to meet that. Shoutouts to the Age of Calamity community. And can I get... Oh, this is specific. A regular QQ, a long Machi Q, and the big one, Buka QQ. Thanks. Well, I, I can give you the, the first two. I don't know I can do the third, but have fun with it. I think I can do the third. Yeah, let's go. Pew, pew. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, oh. oh, I got a laugh for free. <laughs> uh, we also have a hundred dollars from the bean seller who just says, Good luck, Jim. Thank you, bean seller. Time we for time one for or two one, more? One more. One yeah. more? You got it. We have thirty dollars from Harm Jan who says, Good luck to, uh, on the Skyward Sword, Jimbo. Nothing like some back-in-time action to have a good time. Thank you very much as well, Harm. Alright, but so now it's time for the second boss of the run, Skaldera. Interestingly, one of like the harder bosses to do correctly in the speedrun. Um, yeah. Skaldera's damage calculation and like the way that Skaldera will try to like make the fight harder as you damage him more is like kind of weird, so uh, we essentially just want to try to skip the part of the fight where Skaldera runs up to the top of the arena uh, with like his really long legs and then rolls back down, because that's kind of slow. So we're going to attempt to do damage in a very specific way here so that we skip having that cycle happen at all. Okay. Yeah. It's almost late there, but still made it, thankfully. And then the we're reason... Doing... Oh, yeah. Go ahead, go ahead. The reason we can do different types of damages is because we have both um, Skyward Strikes and Normal Strikes, um, meaning that we can do Master Sword damage or Skyward Sword damage, uh, Goddess Sword damage. <laughs> um, yeah, this uh, unfortunately was not 100% perfect, yeah, but... A little too close to Skaldera on one of those yeah. Skyward Strikes, so the game used the actual Goddess Sword as the priority there. Yeah, but now we can do this. Yeah, there we go. Nice. Not too bad. There is a, like a moment there where you can hit the eye while he's 
um, getting out of the rage mode um, so that we can hit him early. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, other than just being slightly too close for that one Skyward Strike, that was fine. Usually, yeah. um, actually, I think what happened there is usually you can get both like the Sword Slash and the Skyward Strike to do damage, but the problem was like Skaldera's rocks like blocked the Skyward Strike somehow. Probably. From that angle, which was just a little strange, but not like too bad of a time loss. Yeah. And then as we go to the end tier, we'll be picking up some more bomb flowers. Yeah. Uh, interesting note about the like doors at the end of these dungeons, they're actually on like this weird cycle uh, where they like glow and dim periodically. Uh, but if you've ever heard of the Super Mario Bros. bus metaphor, uh, it's kind of the same thing here, where the door will only open at the lower, like, whenever it's glowing the least on, like, the rise and uh, fall of, like, how bright it is. So as long as you open the door any time before, like, the next uh, dimming part of the cycle, it, you just have to wait for the dimming for some reason. I'm not sure why they made it like that, but that's what it is. Yes. Now, if you finished Earth Temple, two out of seven done. And now we actually have all uh, pillars. And uh, with this pillar, we actually do want to tunic because obviously there won't be any more pillars after this. And at some point, we need the tunic to get rid of the barriers, um, especially when it comes to going to Lineiru because the Laughing tutorial does not allow you to get to Lineiru even with diving or anything. Yeah, it's just too far away, basically. Yeah. That's what we're going to do right now. Um, and in fact, it's as you see another bit, we just saved the, the prompt here. Um, first, we're going to copy. This is a very important copy. Now we have the file that we're going to use for the rest of the run, allowing us to go into the sky, because now we're getting a tunic. And that file has also um, Elden Flags, which is nice. So this is the same scenario as like the Elden Pillar. Um, we commit Scala Flags, and we also commit Inventory Flags to get the amber tablet um, so we can place it um, but this time instead of um, you know are we aiming the story flag for the Lenebra pillar we actually want to uh, reverse bit warp into the um, pillar cutscene and the main reason is there usually is some fight text in the goddess statue telling you that you place the pillar so by you know doing it in bit and entering the file it doesn't have the pillars placed we don't get the text and we save some time that way. Now he's gonna start a little bit earlier, you know, to get before the before the transition starts, and then the transition starts, and you're now in the cutscene, as you can see. Yeah, and the reason that it didn't um, like had any coordinates is because we were at a safe prompt. And the safe prompt uh, will just load the next the transition normally, which is very nice because that's that way we can play the cutscene normally. Now we have the tunic. Yep. All right. So now uh, that we have the tunic, the next logical step is we're going to take a nap. Yeah. This this is this, this is necessary. <laughs> uh, yes. But it's again won't the effect of this won't be shown for like an hour and a half almost. Yes. <laughs> Yeah. I thought had you just got tired. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah, Link was probably tired after doing two dungeons yeah. in his regular clothes. Yeah. Hatmaster was like, nah, I'm out of here now. I need to stay around for him sleeping. Anyway, now that we've completed two dungeons, according to Fledge, it's time to actually start off on our grand adventure now, and we're going to yeah. get the adventure pouch from him. Fledge doesn't think Skyview and Earth Temple are, you know, that important. Like they, they were just the warm-up dungeons. Yeah, yeah, warm-ups. Yeah. Now you can go. And also right. important, we'd use the left door here. Yes. Very important. Because this actually will use entrance 5 to enter um, Skyloft, which is going to be an in important information the game needs to remember. Right now the game remembers, ah, we entered Skyloft with entrance 5. But it's not going to be important right away because we're first going to do a different but uh, probably even more important RVM, uh, which is going to save a huge chunk. Um, the effect we'll also see later, but mainly and just like, because of routing yeah. convenience. Yeah. The effect of this next one you will see also in about an hour. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of things we do which come back an hour later in this run. Yep. Makes you think about how crazy the routing can get sometimes. 
Yes, so for this one, um, we want to get to the Lumpy Pumpkin. Yes, we also will show the Lumpy Pumpkin. Um, Link is hungry. Yes. Some nice pumpkin soup. Um, so first we're gonna get our loft wing, which will just mean save a file that has a loft wing. Which um, we now did. And then we can enter the sky. Um, this time actually we have the tunic, so that means that all normal loading zones to the sky are active. So by selecting the file, like J Jim is doing here, and then switching shortly before the load would happen, we actually can get the load earlier because of the hero tunic. And now, welcome to some diving practice here. Um, definitely not easy when you do it the first time, but Jim has done it so many times. Um, it's still gonna be a little bit weird to see because, um, you know, this is weird effects and stuff. But that's why we stay on the splash screen here, um, because there's no, like, the borders are not there, so we can actually see more, allowing us to see the island earlier. Yeah, the, we have yeah, to dive here, obviously. Uh, it's it's actually very tricky to do this correctly, because it's, like, yeah. not really possible to tell if you're actually diving in the right direction. Uh, it's very easy to just, like, drift diving in the wrong direction and just not notice. I'm getting a little worried here, because I'm not yeah, seeing maybe it the just it. Yeah, maybe, we'll I think I just jinxed it try perfectly. again. Or was it? Camera will come back to us here and we should be able to see it. Not yeah, I mean, the, oh, yeah, there. oh, just barely. Oh, no, that's unlucky. <laughs> I just jinxed it. I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but, but this I'm, is I'm just... Also, uh, yeah. I'm also pulling up, like, the Wii uh, Motion Plus menu constantly because if I stay on the splash screen for too long, um, then the game will transition to, like, the title trailer or like the title lore that you see, and then yeah. back in time just ends, and we don't want that, of course. Yeah, unfortunately, you know, it's not in the berry. Oh, there we go. That is, was a very, very nice one. Yeah, this was oh, basically perfect. <laughs> yeah, and now we are in the lobby pumpkin. Yay! Hooray! Uh, we actually just want to talk to this guy over here. Very really nice guy. He talks a little bit about the Patro, and um, this is actually one of them where the flag sets when you start talking to them. It's one of the very rare ones, so we want to start before talking to him. And now we yeah, have usually uh, yeah. usually like flags for uh, having talked to NPCs get set at the end of talking to them, but for some reason that one gets set right when you start talking yeah. to them. Now we get the shield here to have it committed, so now the effects will apply the next time we get here. And now for the other thing we're doing, the reason why we had to use the left entrance to go out. Um, um, so we're going to die here again, and we want to enter Ancient Cistern, but we don't have to scale. So normally you have to use the scale to get up on a ledge to enter Ancient Cistern. And there's no real way to do it um, without the scale. But in Back in Time, we can use um, a very cool trick, although it's very hard, um, or hard, I'd say. Um, we can use a trick to actually get there early. But first, we have to get to outside Ancient Cistern, which means we have to go to Farron. Doing the same thing as we always do, uh, saving our file to get our loft wing, and then entering the sky, uh, and then diving into the Farron pillar. Yeah, so same idea here, selecting the hero tunic file to get all sky loading zones and then switching shortly before the loading happens, allowing us to quickly load the sky. And now we're also very close to the Farron Pillar, so we don't need to do that many flaps to fly into Farron Pillar. Yeah, <laughs> thankfully also, the yeah. uh, Farron Pillar is a lot closer than the Lumpy Pumpkin, and it's not like yeah. really high up in the air. Yeah. So now again, the map screen crash crashes, so we have to have file 2 last selected, which is what Jim just did there. Um, and now after the clouds, uh, we want to switch back to a file that has seen the intro cutscene, so you have less, like you don't have the cutscene there playing at the start. And now we just want to get all the logs down on our way. We have a lot of flags now. We have Skylar flags on file 2 and Elden flags on file 3, so we have many, many, many flags we got. So we're going to use file 2 here. Get this lockdown, which is still Fledge. Thank you, Fledge. 
Um, and now in the end temple, we're actually going to commit her three flags um, by shooting above the. Yeah, I didn't enter with file through, so I don't have the slingshot. Yeah. Sure. <laughs> well, that's fine. It yeah. doesn't change too much. We have to log. actually push this log. Saves maybe like five seconds. So, not a big deal. Um, just shows that, you know, File 3 can also do some stuff for us with the Elden Flags. Um, and now we're actually very important. We're going to bit save File 3 here, which means it still has Elden Flags because the effect will only play, uh, will only really affect it once we start it. But once we start it, it will be in Farron. So it has Elden Flags right now, but once we start it, it will be in Farron, which is very nice. And now we can just enter another lockdown and enter outside Ancient Cistern. And now, in outside Ancient Cistern, we're going to die. Um, in Back in Time, we're going to die. And then we're going to start um, shortly after pressing continue, which then the game will um, will try to continue us on the map we're on, on the outside Ancient Cistern, but it will use Entrance 4, uh, which is the thing we just saved. All right, nice. nice. I needed to be silent for the moment there because there's a you know sound cue and everything. It's a pretty tight two frames, um, but he got it. So that you know the game is for short for like a brief second. The game entered the outside engine cistern on entrance four, which was the entrance we used to enter Skyloft, which triggered the cutscene, um, which would normally play when you come from there from the other from the ancient cistern side, and skipping that will. Put us into the ancient cistern. Oh yeah, very easy to follow. Yeah. Yes, cutscene <laughs> wrong up is very powerful, but a little bit complicated. Um, and there were so many other things going on, but yeah, maybe we'll have some time later to explain it a little bit better. But yeah, but first, so uh, yeah. we skipped using the water dragon scale to get into the ancient cistern, uh, but. The game still expects you to have the Water Dragon scale when you're in the Ancient Cistern, so we're going to do some more RBMs to skip having to use the Water Dragon scale in here at all. And these are both going to be our Gratitude Crystal RBMs, so this is why we uh, talked, or this is why we RBM'd the Betro flag earlier, so that now we can get these Gratitude Crystals to appear on Nighttime Skyloft uh, in Back in Time here, and then we can RBM the scene flags that they correspond to. Yes. So we're going to do this one down first. here. Yep. We're going to start our file and then collect the Gratitude Crystal. Uh, this is going to open up the locked door uh, that you just saw briefly on the left side of the screen there. Uh, but we do have to commit it first, so uh, we have to... Uh, the only thing we can really do is pull this lever. So, yeah. A little slow, but yeah. ends up being the fastest thing we can do. With a lot and of Gratitude going for Ancient Sister. <laughs> yeah. Great dungeon. <laughs> and then now, uh, we're going to do a second RVM. Uh, this one is going to be a different Gratitude Crystal. It's going to be the one by the uh, Lumpy Pumpkin Patch. And this one is actually going to open up the uh, boss door for us so that we don't have to go get the boss key. And this basically skips like the entire dungeon because now we just have to go to the center, get the whip, and then go up to the boss. So, uh, as, we're doing, as we're doing this one, I think we could probably fit in a donation or two. Yeah. Wonderful, wonderful. We have $25 from Arc Prefect, who says, you're the reason I got into the whole speedrunning community years ago, and it's been a fantastic time ever since. Thank you for all the amazing runs, and remember, circles or restart. <laughs> Thankfully, we don't didn't have to restart. Yeah, yeah, nice, yeah nice. didn't know that one was that high stakes. Uh, <laughs> also, $25 from 64-bit Link, who says, Good luck, Jim, on the run, and the title screen, shenanigans. Let's get that blindfolded demise incentive met, which is a great reminder, chat, that we are so close. We're less than $2,000 away. Um, do you want to see that? Because... I think we all want to see Jim yeah. not be able to see. Yeah? That's... Yeah. Yes. <laughs> yes. Please. Simpler than R R RBMs. Got it. <laughs> <laughs> Time for any more? 
Uh, actually, so I, unfortunately, I kind of missed the gratitude crystal there that I was supposed to collect as I was doing that. So yes, we have time for more now. So I have to do the same thing over again. <laughs> Wonderful. Uh, Thanks, uh, this is a good time to to put in a a nice lengthy one for you. We have a thousand dollars from Matt Lold, who says, "I don't know if this is supposed to be a poem or a song, but I'm going to read it as a poem." Hark. The peace must be restored, so find your loft wing, climb aboard, and drive off as it races toward pillars meant to be explored. You'll fight against an evil lord, you'll grab the harp and strike a chord. Through, though many quests can be ignored, there's just no time you can't afford to catch some bugs or be adored, to skip Beatrice, she's looking bored, and skip the giant flying gourd. Heck, why not just skip half the horde to face demise the most abhorred? Strike him down, and once he's floored, when rain has poured and thunders roared, and lightning's in, your blade's been stored. Finish him for your reward. Run completed, Skyward Sword. That was really wow. cool. That was actually really, really cool. <laughs> Thank you very much. Good job. It was a beautiful poem. Yes. <laughs> I did not know there were that many uh, words that ended in or. <laughs> I had to pull out a thesaurus for that one. <laughs> uh, right. Time for any more now. <laughs> uh, in just a little bit. Okay, didn't think so. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so I finally did that RBM correctly, uh, so we can continue on with this little bit of ancient system that we're actually doing. Yeah. Uh, so next up we have the Stoutmaster fight, which is a pretty fun fight. Um, if all the RNG goes well, I will not get hit at all, and we'll basically beat him in like 20-ish seconds, yes, including cutscene nice time. Shield. And yes, it's also one of the only times in the run, and the first time that we use the shield. Oh wow, he missed. <laughs> I was literally right in front of him and he missed. Is he that bad? Apparently. Alright, nice. We got the good RNG. Let's go. Now we can get the whip. Yeah. So that's the mini boss of Ancient Cistern who's guarding the whip. So now we can just go in and get the whip. Uh, the whip is a pretty cool item. Um, as we mentioned earlier, uh, we skipped getting the beetle in Skyview Temple, and by extension this also means that we'll be skipping the hook beetle, uh, which you would normally get in Laneru Desert. Um, and so because we're not getting the hook beetle, we have to have ways to get around all of the hook beetle uses, although here comes the boss door, uh, in Laneru Mining <laughs> Facility. And so the whip is one of the necessary components for being able to skip the hook beetle in the Linear Mining Facility when we finally get around to doing it. It's also one of the main forces that decides the dungeon order, because for, in order to do LMF, um, we need the whip and the bow. So we'll need to do Ancient Cistern and Sandship before doing LMF. So we can skip the hook beetle very easily. Now we are going to fight Coloctos. It's a very cool fight. There's some nice tricks to quickly beat him because we have the hero mode Skyward Strike. Yeah, the hero mode Skyward Strike is very overpowered uh, yeah. in this fight. Um, <laughs> excuse me. When they were designing this fight, I guess they just didn't really think about like players coming in here with the hero mode Skyward Strike. Uh, so we'll see what the effects of those are in the second phase of the fight. But in this first phase, we basically just kind of have to wait for Kalakdos to try and smack us down, uh, and then we can just rip his arms off. Uh, so when... Oh, if you do it too early, it just doesn't work, which is interesting. Uh, so here, uh, we whip his core here, which is actually RNG manipulation for his next attack. And then we're going to place down two bombs here. And as he tries to do his next attack, if we make both bombs explode, 
uh, both bombs individually will actually do damage to Kalakdos' core, which does enough damage to just one cycle the first phase completely and bring us into the second phase here. Where he brings out six swords. So basically, we just need him to do one lunge attack. I need to make sure I do not die here. And then we want to use this sword just to open up his core so that uh, we can perform some Skyward Strikes on it. Uh, pretty much every other weapon that you would normally have here only does like one, uh, like one HP of attack damage, but they just didn't take into account the Master Sword Skyward Strike that we have in Hero Mode. So just two Skyward Strikes and uh, that's it. Yeah. <laughs> or it would normally be like a minute longer uh, second phase of the fight. I don't know. Almost done the third dungeon. Yep. I think so maybe this part this... container. Yeah. We don't want it. Yeah. We'll be ignoring it. It wouldn't be like a huge deal if we did get it, but it's just inconvenient because, wouldn't you know, we're going to be doing more back in time in just a little bit. <laughs> yeah. I never would have saw that coming. I know. It's a, it's a huge plot twist in the route. Oh, yeah. Might also be a good time to talk about the cutscene warm up again, um, as there was a lot going on. So the main idea is that we can load for a brief second. Um, we can enter the area we just died in with the entrance that our file had saved. Um, and if we load an entrance that has a cutscene attached to it, um, we can skip that cutscene in a brief second. And that allows us to get all the stuff connected to the cutscene. And usually, a cutscene ends up into um, another loading into another area. So usually it means we can also load into another area. Uh, and for example, it, in, in theory, it's also possible to do credits warp with this trick, which is very cool, uh, although it's very hard to set up because the problem is just you need the perfect room and entrance to be available to you in a quick manner, which is not often the case. In fact, it's very often not the case. So yeah. But it can do a lot of cool things. I mean, cutscene rom mopping up is obviously powerful. Right, so May this I slip in a quick announcement for you? Oh, yeah, sure. Blindfolded Demise Fight did just get met, so right. I hope you're ready. Oh, I'm ready. We're also only He's a little really over. Well. Oh, are they? We'll have to check. We're also only a little over $50,000 away from a million, so um, keep it up. Keep mm -hmm. it up. Let's go. You know what, Jim? I think we can also add blindfolded tantalus to this, actually, I think. Well, yeah, I mean, I don't know. We, we, did, we did reach that blindfolded demise bill pretty quickly. I think we could also throw in uh, blindfolded tantalus for the crowd's amusement as well. Yeah, yeah, I think that's very fair. Two blindfolded boss fights for the price of one. Yeah, yeah. I'll let it be known. I have never done the Tentalus fight blindfolded, but I'm sure I'll be. Yeah. An expert. I believe in you. All right, All right. Lineiru. Yeah, we're finally in Lineiru. So we're going to instantly do more back in time stuff. Yes. Because we really like the title screen and we can't get <laughs> enough of it. Yes. But the main thing we're looking for is getting to Sandship. Getting to Sandship means. Getting the claw shots. Getting the claw shots means going to the main desert and opening the trial up. Usually, um, opening the trial up would mean uh, getting the song and all that stuff. But we don't. We haven't even opened the Thunderhead, and we're not going to um, because we can use RBM as opening a trial is also just a scene flag that we can get um, on Skyloft. For this RPM, we want to uh, load the Academy again, except this time we don't want to load it um, with, like, like right as if we're right at the beginning of the game. We instead want to load it as if we uh, just did the lofting tutorial, which conveniently is where file 2 is saved. Mm -hmm. um, so this loads us in a state where we have uh, Professor Alwyn here, 
We have a specific scene flag for us that we want. Yeah, he knows the way to the trial. Exactly. He shows he us has the, the way. secret code. Yeah. And to commit this one, we're going to show you a hidden rupee that you didn't know about before. <laughs> Yay. Can I sneak in with a quick donation? Ah, uh, yeah, sure. We have $9,000 <laughs> from DK Salfo, who says, Can't wait to see you not see. <laughs> <laughs> I can't wait to not see either. <laughs> Thank you so much to everyone who helped us meet that incentive. Yes. Wait, so that mean we're only 40k away from 1 million now? Ooh. Let me check for you. Uh, we are currently 56 away from oh, okay. 1 million. Okay. So that 9k came in quite a bit earlier. Things update at a, an interesting yeah. pace sometimes. <laughs> All the time travel is causing it. I really yeah, think that's just... the problem. <laughs> <laughs> Too much time travel. And this time, we are going to open a chest. Yeah. One of the only chests in the game that uh, yeah. has a scene flag attached Ooh, to it. What will we get? What will we get? <gasps> oh, sad. Well... No. We got a scene flag. <laughs> got a scene flag. That's all we need. Um, and this one is actually the scene flag for having a statue visited, visited, because each statue, when you select it the first time, it also sets a scene flag so the game knows, oh, you have checked that statue so you can land at it. So, you know, we're going to use that right away here. We're going to use the map screen when we re-enter Lanayru. And it's going to show us a, a statue that we're not supposed to have. But with the scene flag RVM, we the game thinks we visited it so we can land at it. Yeah, unfortunately, not every statue is a scene flag. There are some statues that need to uh, be known by, like, multiple scenes. So those statues yeah. specifically are story flags, but all of the ones in Lanayru, thankfully, are scene flags. So. Yeah. Also, can you can see here. LMF raised, but it is not actually raised. <laughs> That's just because we beat Ancient Cistern, and the game just assumes that we should have beaten LMF at this point then as well. But, yeah. you know. We're going to raise Lanayru for the mining facility, but not now. There we don't get killed by that guy. Yeah. Another use for the shield. Yeah. Yeah, so the, the reason I don't have the shield just out the entire time um, is because both rolling and like doing a shield bash are the same motion. It's a shake of the nunchuck. Um, and sometimes the game has to like infer which action you actually want to do if you have the shield equipped and are like moving around. So to make sure that we always get a roll when we want to get a roll, we just have the shield unequipped unless it's absolutely necessary. So that we don't do any accidental shield bashes. Welcome to the first Ellen realm. The main idea here is to just get the um, tears in the fastest manner, which is usually like a circle around the map um, if it's only possible so that's what we're going to do here there are some places in the quicksand um, that are just traversable just like the no normal um, the neighbor map which uh, Jim knows so you can just use them to quickly get to the left side here and start the circle Yeah, so uh, the trials are actually pretty cool, I think. Especially in uh, in speed runs, they're pretty fun. Um, I know a lot of people have fear of them, but <laughs> when we know what to do, they're not too bad. Yes. It's just very nice movement to watch. No, no scary title screen all the time. Just some nice, clean movement. Well, not in this run. <laughs> yeah. There have been some routes in the past where I've uh, Entered a trial in back in time to get a flag from the trial. Which is also fun, but in a different way. <laughs> Never think there was even a low percent route once that did the entire Baron trial in back in time. That was fun. Yes. Fun to watch for sure. I'm difficult to do. <laughs> but fun to watch. 
And so uh, we're basically just going around collecting tears, avoiding watchers. Uh, so if we have any more donations that we want to read, we can do that right now as well. Wonderful. We have $10 from FTAB, who says, Bucks for bonks! I will be donating $20 per bonk this run. Feel free to give me a couple extra charity bonks, Jim. Good luck. <laughs> will do. And make sure that they don't waste too much time. <laughs> of course, yeah. yeah. We have $25 from Dame, who says, Hey, Jim, and hey, Pippi. Best of luck with the run. I know you will kill it as you always do. Thanks for always being a light in my life multiple times a week with your streams. I hope this run is a light in other lives today as you destroy Skyward Sword yet again in the name of destroying cancer. Hope Girahim plays nice today. Can't wait to see the blindfolded demise fight that never ceases to amaze. And let's get those circles! Oh, I'm glad that uh, everybody who wanted circles got their wish. <laughs> yes. Thank you very much, Nintendo. We can probably do one more here. Perfect. I have $20 here from Raid Spinel, who says, Jim, is it too late to ask for Dig Spot RBM? <laughs> <laughs> I think it might be a little bit late for Dig Spot RBM, yeah, oh. unfortunately. Unfortunate timing there. Yeah, for, for context, uh, Dig Spot RBM is an RBM that is potentially very useful in the Skyward Sword randomizer uh, sometimes, but unfortunately it's never useful in like the actual vanilla <laughs> game speedruns. Maybe. Okay, so now we're about to get the swap shots. Very useful item. And the first of three trial items we're going to be getting. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, um, we skipped getting the Water Dragon scale, so we're not going to be doing the Farron trial at all. Uh, but we will be doing uh, the uh, Elden trial and the Skyloft trial later on, once we actually need the items that those trials give. Also, right now, because we're not on, like, the correct, or the normal layer that you would be on when you do the trial, we can skip the phi text that we normally would get after the trial there, where she, like, explains what you do with the claw shots. So, we do always appreciate not having to listen to phi as much as possible. Now, because we have the claw shots, uh, we're gonna make our way over to the sand sea. I did check the statue back there. Um... Because we need to come back uh, later to raise the linear mining facility, of course. So we will do that after the sand shift. And once again, as Pepper mentioned earlier, we do need uh, the bow if we want to skip one of the uses of the beetle inside the linear mining facility. So now we got to go get the small key from Gorko up here. And just refill on some bombs first, and apparently a bush. A bush is not necessary, though. You might also notice sometimes where I'm, like, uh, using the C button to go into first person right before I, like, go into a loading zone or, like, start a cutscene like this. Um, usually when I do that, I save, like, half a second due to either skipping a camera pan after the cutscene or by uh, instantly getting control of Link when I go to the other side of a loading zone. Uh, so, yeah, that's why we do that. Because instantly getting control of Link will allow me to move quicker and it'll save like half a second or so. All right. But that only applies when we actually get instant control on the other side. Now we're in the Sand Sea, which usually is a longer segment. But, uh, obviously we have our ways with REM to avoid most of the sailing. Which, you know, if you've done a bunch of sailing, uh, it's not that interesting anymore, so it's nice that we have an easy way to skip it. Which we're going to do here now again. Yeah, so this is, this is the, I think this is the longest RBM that stays on Skyloft. Uh, 
this this RBM, we need to go get the like gratitude crystal that is the furthest out of the way you could possibly imagine. <laughs> Uh, it's yes. the one that's all the way down where we save our loft wing, uh, in like the little alcove that our loft wing is like stuck in near the beginning of the game. But first, of course, we have to make it nighttime, and then after we make it nighttime, we have to travel all the way down through the cave, uh, to get to the bottom part of Skyloft. You can't actually dive down to the bottom part of Skyloft, um, but the problem is you can only do that at daytime. Because when you do that at nighttime, uh, the game is like, oh, well, you can't call your loft wing at nighttime, so it just instantly uh, kind of voids you out and then has you getting saved by, like, one of the night guards yeah. uh, that are on patrol. Which is unfortunate, but just the way it is. So one thing with these night back in times that we've done a bit now, um, the only um, Skyloft layer at night that actually loads is um, the, la the layer that you have before getting a tunic. So it's nice that we have a fire without a tunic. Obviously, we need it for a lot of reasons, but this is also one. Um, just being able to load the night here uh, without crashing is very important for all these scratched crystals. That's nice. Crystal's very far away. Yeah. <laughs> we can read a donation if we're just running through the kit again. Perfect. We have a $5 donation from Slayer, who says, Choo choo! Time traveling $5 train here. Next stop, 1 million. All aboard. And if you want to get a ticket for that time traveling train, I hear time travel's really cool. You should definitely do it. <laughs> time for one more. Uh, not quite yet, so okay. uh, we're going to start our file and we're going to go collect this Gratitude Crystal. And this essentially just allows us to skip um, the entire Sand Sea, because the scene flag that that crystal corresponds to on the Sand Sea is the sand ship being docked after you normally shoot it down. Uh, but normally to shoot down the sand ship, you have to first go to Skipper's Retreat and find the ancient sea chart and then go to the ancient harbor, it's not the ancient harbor, excuse me, the ancient shipyard, where you just kind of waste a bunch of time. And then you have to go to the Pirate's Fortress where you can get the ability to douse for the ship, and then you can finally go find the ship and shoot it down. Yes. Uh, but that's all really slow and kind of boring, so... <laughs> Instead, we just collect a Gratitude Crystal while on the title screen. More Gratitude. Always like more Gratitude. Yes, and so for Sand Ship, the main thing that we need is the bow. And after we have the bow, um, we can go as fast as possible to beat the dungeon, which means basically uh, actually going back in time in, <laughs> in the game using Time Shift Stone. Um, and uh, then opening the boss door in some fashion. Yeah, and the bow we need for like um, a bunch of things, for example, for LMF. Um, for the last section at the end of the dungeon. And for Skykeep. That's what we needed. Yeah, so we just gotta sail over here to where the sand ship would be docked, and we just have the A button prompt to enter the sand ship. So, dungeon number four. Let's go. Let's go to the next station and save. This REM is actually going to use this one jewel we hit in Earth Temple all the way back. They're in Thrill Digger, yeah. Yeah, Thrill Digger, yeah. Yeah, remember when we did that an hour ago? Yes. <laughs> now it matters. And the reason why it matters now is because we can uh, commit that a flag to um, Skyloft and have something happen there. Um, Mainly, we are going to um, bonk pile 3, which is the Elden Flags. It, it shows Farron, but that's just because we bit saved it there, but it actually still has Elden Flags. We're going to bonk that on the tree, which has Elden Flags. So remember, we had like the whole thing where we rbm the shed, so it's going to open the shed as well as the patrol door, as we used it earlier. And now it also, inside of patrol, is going to um, spawn a chest 
um, that usually would happen like after you um, give Patrol 30 Gratitude Crystals. We don't have 30 Gratitude Crystals, so use that jewel flag, which corresponds to spawning a chest once we enter. Which, very nice. And then there's going to be some text there, and at the end of the text we're going to start um, giving us the scene flag that we're looking for, which has a very cool effect on Soundship. Select the right and then left here. And RBM on the third text box going to the fourth one. The flag is actually on the fourth one, but it's slightly faster to start the file on the third one because you have enough time to clear the fourth one and still get the flag uh, before the file starts. And now we can continue on with Sandship. Uh, we gotta go get the first small key, and then we'll be doing a death warp. Uh, to make our way back up to the top so that we don't have to, uh, like, go through this whole section again. Yeah, we probably have time for a donation right now. Perfect, perfect. Uh, sorry about that. Uh, here is a $50 donation from Klizix, who said... Not sure how much I donated. The Skyward Sword title screen was covering the donation page. Loving the event so far. Looking forward to more fantastic runs this week. That sounds like a great idea for a future uh, GDQ Skyward Sword run. Just put an overlay of the title screen on the donation page. Oh, that'll make it more difficult. I like yeah. it. <laughs> Do you have time for one more? Well, I'm trying to hit yes. this lock right here, but I can't quite get the right direction. There we go. There we go. Yeah, so sometimes the... Sometimes with, like, the motion plus gets, like, slightly uncalibrated, I have to do some specific slashes to properly recalibrate it. But yes, we do have time for one more before the Skirbo fight. Wonderful. Here's $250 from Ray Storm Thunder. Who says, hello, Jim. Always amazing to watch your runs live and excited to see it at GDQ. As always, good luck on the run. Thank you very much for the good luck. All right, so we got our small key. We death warped back up, and so now we can fight Skurvo. <laughs> Excuse me. Uh, so Skurvo is also one of the mini bosses that we want to use our shield on. Uh, we do also want to intentionally take some damage during this fight, because who would have guessed we're going to do back in time after the fight is over again. Um, so this fight is kind of just RNG a little bit. Um, ideally, he just kind of stays vulnerable the whole time, but it's also a weird sort of balancing act, because we also uh, like want him to actually attack us a little bit, which he does not seem too keen to do right now. Yeah. He just kind of keeps on being susceptible to our attacks, but hopefully he'll attack soon. Yeah, I mean, if he doesn't case, attack, yeah. uh, that's still fine, but ideally he'll attack us and we don't have to take damage with our bombs. Exactly. But if, yeah, he's not really wanting right now. Well, yeah. <laughs> maybe last phase. I guess not. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> It'd be great He's... to get that in any other category. Yeah. It's very friendly, apparently, today. Maybe he just wants to talk. Yeah, maybe. Unfortunately, like, I've, I've been on this ship too long. <laughs> Unfortunately, we need your bow, sir. Yeah, so the bow is a pretty nice item. One of the most powerful weapons in the game, uh, actually. It one-shots a lot of enemies, specifically a lot of Akobans, uh, which is very nice. Yeah, also with the with the motion controls, there's like a way where you can very quickly full charge the bow, which makes it very quick to use as well. Very nice. Well, yeah, the main right. thing that we still need to do is open the boss door and get into the past. 
and we're going to first deal with the boss door. I probably should have damaged down first, but... No. Should be fine. Yeah, so... Uh, this Arbium right here is going to be another trip to the Lumpy Pumpkin. Uh, Link has uh, done a lot more adventuring since his last trip there, and he's hungry again. Understandable. He's not hungry for food, though. This time, <laughs> he's hungry for collateral damage. Ooh, he's feeling rowdy. Oh, no. Oh, boy. Yeah, but first we're going to do the, the same shenanigans uh, to get into the sky. Um, actually committing file 1 flags here by selecting the statue with file 1. Um, that's actually because it has the Lumpy Pumpkin intro cutscene already set. So when we watch the Lumpy Pumpkin intro cutscene, it won't play. Um, and now we bit say file 2 for the Laugh Wing, and then we can load into the sky again with our file that can dive. Because to get to the Lumpy Pumpkin, we have to do the difficult dive again. So yeah, that's what we're going to do now. 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. All right. Let's go. Yeah, hopefully this time we'll get this dive fine. I think yeah. the last time I just didn't fly up high enough, like I miscounted yeah, I think my probably. flaps. So this time we should be high enough. Uh, as we're diving here, we do have time for another donation. Lovely. We have $50 from Layer 8. I wonder if that's a math layer. Who says, my definition of GDQ is gymnast donation quota. I love to donate during your runs, buddy. Good luck. One mil hype. Yeah. Layer 8 is actually the Skyloft layer without the Skykeep. Yeah. We do actually go on that layer this run. <laughs> yeah. All right, so it's nice of that uh... layer to donate. Mm -hmm. That's so we nice. do have to select file one there to actually bring the flags back in so I didn't have to watch the intro cutscene. And here's the collateral damage that Link was hungry for. Oh boy, Jim. Very rude to just destroy the chandelier like that. Well, it's okay, because as we mentioned earlier, the stuff that we actually do in Back in Time doesn't have any effect unless it's right after we start our file. <laughs> so this never actually happened, if you really think about it. And the barkeep still seems pretty angry about it, you know. But alright, I trust you. <laughs> yeah, he'll get over it. Yeah, this is all just group delusion? Yes. <laughs> all a dream. Link is just dreaming that and waking up and suddenly things are changed around it. Yes, so this one opened the boss door. So the last thing we need to do is go to the past by hitting a time shift stone. Which we're going to do now. Alright, so normally... Um... When you shoot this time shift stone, um, it gets blocked off by the Coblin, and you also kind of get stuck. Uh, here, like out on the deck, because the game wants you to like go up these dollies to like go and unlock uh, the time shift stone again. Uh, but we're going to be doing a trick called mast skip, where we skip having to climb up the mast and the dollies, and. So normally the game has this, like, zone uh, right here where if you die anywhere inside this zone while it's active, you just spawn in front of that locked door so you can't just get back to the statue that you saved at if it's inside the sand ship. But that zone doesn't quite cover how far you can jump out of bounds here. So we just jump out of bounds far enough, die, continue, and then we're just back in here, so... Yeah. Back to that last safe point, which was the statue. Yeah, I guess they didn't expect you to jump off of the uh, yeah off of a lifeboat like that. Oh boy, Tantalus fight coming up. I know. It's uh, some some prelude before, but oh boy. You sure you can do it blindfolded? Uh, I mean, I've never actually done the fight blindfolded, but I think. It's fun. Yeah, I gotta I find a way. <laughs> as long as you're sure. <laughs> Also, with regards to the blindfold, um, I couldn't find the actual blindfold that I thought I had, so I'm just going to be putting like a blanket over my head, and you guys will have to trust that I can't see anything. Hmm. Oh boy. 
That's right, a lot so of... this part right here isn't actually part of the fight. This is yes, like the we'll lead up it. into the fight. Yeah. Fight is up there at the door. <clears throat> we just have to get a bunch of tentacles out of the way while the sand ship is getting destroyed by this massive creature. Can't, can't wait to see what actually causes this damage. So yeah, the water is rising and we just try to get like as far into the cutscene as possible before it plays, so we, you know, save a little bit of time. And in order to destroy the tentacles, you can either use the bow or skyward strike. Um, both work. I think it's fully le uh, loaded um, um, bow shot, but with the C it's very easy to fully load it. Boy, getting close. Oh. Uh, just after this fight takes here, we're going to open the door. Uh, this fight does take a while, so hopefully uh, I'll be able to see the game again soon. Yep. It's very fire spawning here. Better be. Alright, here we go. Oh boy. Whew. Hope you're ready, chat. Okay. Whew. Oh, whew. All right. Okay. Whew. Whew. We did Good it. Job. Good job. Whew, that was. That was a tough one. That was excellent tough RNG one, yeah. too. Yes. Just amazingly played there. I don't think we could have done that any faster. Like it's literally <laughs> I impossible. I agree. Yeah. Mm. Okay, so, the right. reason, so yeah. Uh, yeah, if you want to explain it, Pepper. Yeah, the reason that that <laughs> happened is because of the RVM, that one of the first RVM we did, with the, the jewel, but the jewel was important. Uh, that one um, allowed us to set the flag that means that we have hit the crest um, at the end of the dungeon. And because Tantalus, the boss fight, and the crest share the same place, it's the same area, when we enter the boss fight, the hitting the crest takes priority. So the game will be like, oh, you hit the crest because the flag is set for hitting the crest. So it will play all the stuff uh, regarding hitting the crest, meaning we'll see the cut flame cutscene and beat the dungeon through that. Technically, also, I we promise, can, yeah. uh, we're not going to skip the demise fight. That will yeah, actually no, be no, a no, properly no. blindfolded that's just fight. True one. <laughs> that's why it wasn't the yeah. goal. <laughs> because, you know, we don't really blindfold anything. <laughs> All right. So now that we have the bow and the whip, we can finally get through the linear mining facility without the beetle. Yeah, just or need to raise it. To, we still have to raise it up. So uh, this is also one of the more complicated uh, sure. RBM sequences that we're going to be doing in this run. And it starts and it already starts, here. Yeah. Yes, we need fair and flags. Uh, now the lock is coming back. The lock we did while we did, we did Farron, that we just like set aside, that Nat uh, kindly reminded us. Um, <clears throat> we need to go to Skyview uh, in back in time, so all the way there. Um, and even more problematic, we need to get to the entrance cutscene that plays when you enter Skyview, which requires you to be on the correct layer for the map to play the intro cutscene. Right now, we actually don't have a file that has the right layer, unfortunately. Um, so first, we're going to go into the Farron Pillar as usual. So saving a Loftbook file goes into the sky, dive into the Farron Pillar. Um, but in the, this time, when we enter the Farron Pillar, we actually want the cutscene that plays at the start of it, because that cutscene gives you the story flag for the right layer. So we want to watch that. Usually we skip that by switching our file, but this time we're going to keep file 2, which has not watched the, the cutscene, which is while it will play. And then we're going to watch it with file 2. And from that point on, uh, due to how the way we, how it works with story flags, we cannot select any file after we get that flag. Because the moment we select any file, it will update our story flags and the flag will be gone. And we cannot load the deep woods in the right layer for the Skyview entrance cutscene. So, after he skips the cutscene here, um, when we land, he has to make sure to not select any file for the rest of this back in time. Which is um, tricky, obviously. Um, because we still need also, a bunch of... Yeah, go ahead. That also includes... Uh, I'm not allowed to go from the splash screen to the title yes. screen. Or from the splash screen to like the file selection screen. Uh, because doing that selects file 3. Yes. Or not select file three, but loads the data from file three. Exactly. 
Yeah, so from here on out, I can't go off uh, this screen. Yes. But thankfully, we do have the Wii Motion Plus tutorial uh, prompt, which we can use to uh, press the A button without having to like worry about accidentally going through um, to the file select screen. So thank you very much, Wii Motion Plus tutorial. Yes, very useful. And another useful thing that we have set up was actually saving file 3 in Farron. So the first time uh, in bit you load an area, it will load the usual scene. So the usual scene would be Farron Woods flags when we enter Farron Woods. And on the on those flags, we have saved file 3 flags. So um, because it loads the normal, um, this normal scene once when we enter it, we actually have file reflex applied without having to select it, which is perfect because we can't select anything, but we still need to get to deep woods, which means getting the vine down and somehow get around the kikwis because we're actually on the kikwi layer again um, right now. That's why we had the log down, because that just allowed us to skip that. Now we can just enter deep woods. And now finally, after we have entered deep woods, we're on the right layer. So now we can start selecting things if we want to. Um, but first, um, we also need to die and reload the area because right now the doors to Skyview are already open and we can't trigger the entrance cutscene, um, which would cut trigger after the opening door cutscene. So we're going to reload with a different file so now the doors are closed again. Nice. And now we want to trigger the event of the door opening, which we can do by selecting file 2, which happens to have the flag for the crystal being hit on Skyloft, which is like very the start of the game. So that's nice that we got that. And now it's going to play the crystal hit cutscene, which teleports us here, playing the Skyview door opening cutscene. And after that, because we're in the right layer, it's going to play the entrance cutscene, setting the flag we need. And voila, we're going to have an LMF that rises. A very long, complicated one, but we got through it. We raced the linear mining facility by entering <laughs> Skyview. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> Just happened to be that way. All right, so I'm also going to do or take some damage into this cutscene right here. Because who would have guessed there's even more back in time coming up? So oh, I'd be surprised. <laughs> I know, it's absolutely shocking. Um, so keeping up with the theme of doing two RBMs per dungeon, um, yep. we're also going to be doing two RBMs in this dungeon. Uh, thankfully, they're pretty short ones. Um, yep. Nothing like uh, Tentalus Skip or uh, the opening of the Sandship boss door. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, usually this is kind of a bit of the beauty of RBM as well. Is that it... Um, Take some time to do, so we really have to make it worth our time doing it, and only have like bigger things being skipped, or have a quick RBM like this one, where we just spawn profile two, which has skull of flags opening the gates, and then we can enter the goddess statue with file three, and file three has the Elden pillar placed, um, which will trigger the fight text for that because Fi talks about you that, oh, there's a new pillar now. Um, and that will also set the scene flag at the end of it, which we're going to use right here and RBM that. Here we go. That's oh, that gonna... works. I feel yes. like the timing on that was a bit weird, but I guess we'll Yeah, there's see. sometimes some lag on that text box for some reason. Uh, that can be a trick. Alright, so this right here, our use of the whip is how we skip needing to use the hook beetle right there to drop a bomb uh, into that uh, little spot there. We can just barely whip the lever in time before Link like drowns in the quicksand, mm -hmm. thankfully. So, bomb refill. Alright, so that first uh, RBM that we did up there is gonna open up like a shortcut with uh, a little box that normally you're like supposed to push out of the way of a ladder. Um, 
when you, uh, like, after you get the gust spells. I'm gonna look to see if it worked here. Okay, so it didn't work, unfortunately, so I will have to do that again. Um, but thankfully yeah. it's one of the shorter ones, so that's fine. There's some weird lag on the text box for some reason, and it sometimes can mess up the timing. Usually, doing timing for bit RBM stuff is not that tight um, for basically anything, but that RBM in particular has some weird lag sometimes. Right, so since we're just going to do the exact same thing again, we can probably read some donations. Oh wow, my favorite time of day. <laughs> we have $50 from The Sound Defense, who says, I wrote this donation at the end of the run and then sent it back in time to now. Great job on finishing the run. I just hope this doesn't corrupt my save. <laughs> we also have $25 from I'm Just Aces, who says, hello, hello, Jim. Hey, Twitch chat. I'm so excited to see my favorite speedrunner run my favorite game today. I think the only thing that would make it better is hitting that one mil mark. Can we get a $5 train going? I'll start with five tickets. We would love to hit that one mil mark. Y'all, I hear that they're going to play Mario Kart. Has anybody ever heard of that game? I think it's kind of cool. <laughs> I think they drive cars. So too We have to hit a million first. So with, even though the box is not visually moved right now, if I exit this area after committing it by blowing up those other boxes and then come back in, I believe it should be moved Yeah. Uh, now. Because LMF is actually into two maps um, um, parted. And this right here is actually a map transition, not like a room transition. But actually, it's a completely different map here. Um, which means it is uh, counted as a reload. And as you can see, the box is moved. Very nice. Now we can do the other RBM. Yeah, the other actual RBM. Yes. <laughs> <clears throat> which is actually going to use the uh, staying on a splash screen again. Um, and using the Remotion Plus tutorial to be able to run. Um, and this time, the reason we stand up the splash screen is because we want to load absolutely no information. Uh, we want to enter Night Academy at the at the very start, like the the as no with no information. So it's at the very start, the very default layer. Um, and the way we can do it is by just never selecting a file. And if you remember, opening um, the splash screen will load file three information, which will make this not work. So we have to avoid that. And then we can just enter it with um, the splash screen here, and it will just be the default sky layer, at uh, the default Night Academy layer. Allowing us to talk with Fledge. Hey, buddy. Long time no see. It's actually the tux we used at the very start of the game. <laughs> and we just got it again, but this time for the naval mining facility. And in this case, it opens the, the wind gate to the midsection there, so we can get quickly to the boss key. And this shortcut allows us to get quickly to the gust bellies. Yeah, otherwise we'd have to collect, like, uh, the small key in the chest there, and then go around through, like, two other rooms. Yeah. This also sets up a very convenient depth warp location. Um, because now, once we get the Gust Bellows, we can just death warp back to the statue that we last saved at. And then make our way over to the boss key. Nice. Man, Link has died so many times this run. <laughs> Oop. I know we Hank. have someone donating for bonk de or for uh, bonks, but do we have anyone donating for deaths? Mm. Does anybody have a death tally? <laughs> Definitely would be something. Don't want to bankrupt anyone. But <laughs> yeah. It's for a good cause. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So uh, right now we have to wait for this really slow minecart to crawl all the way over to where that. Uh, other like windmill propeller uh, gate opener 
a switch is. I don't know what to call it. But we have time for one or two more donations. Fantastic. Here is a hundred dollars from Jordan B. Tucker, who says, Good luck on your run, Jim. Your streams are a joy to watch. Your game knowledge is always impressive, and your glitch explanation videos are so informative. Put this donation toward the blindfolded demise fight. Let's kick cancer's butt. And since we met that, reminder that we still do want to see those extra tracks for Mario Kart as well. So there's more incentives to look at. We also have $25 from Mouse of Madness, who says, there's nothing quite so uplifting as a Skyward Sword run. Time for any more? Oh uh, well, yeah, we're getting into the thick of like LMF here, so maybe after we beat sure the thing. boss. Yeah. All right, so this is the boss key room. A lot of cool little movement stuff actually happening here. This is probably one of like the funnest. Oh, I missed the bomb. Wow, the right bomb there. somehow <laughs> landed there. All right. Yeah. This is probably like my favorite room in like any dungeon of the game, like in a speedrun sense, I would say. Because yeah. we just get to constantly keep on moving around and keep doing things on our way to the boss key. So we use the claw shots uh, back there to like skip having to climb up some vines, which is nice. Here we can use the whip to get this lever down without having to like actually run up the wall. And then we can move these platforms uh, using the gust bellows. And small tech right there, it's actually faster to pull out our sword instead of using the B button to like cancel uh, using uh, a B wheel item most of the time. Especially in this scenario where we like want to be moving really fast uh, after we use the B-wheel item. We make our way to the end here. Once again, pull out the sword and then roll over. Because the platform is still moving even after we use the gust bellows on it, we can sort of use that momentum uh, to jump to uh, the actual platform on the other side. And then these switches have to be hit in a specific order, but it's always the same order. So. We already know what that order is. We don't have to look at the other side of the room to figure it out. Yeah. It's important to stay on the platform and not, not go on the safe ground. Um, because then when we void, we'll be put on the last safe ground that we were on. Which is not the platform, so we'll be back where the boss key is. So now we void out, and because we used a lot of bombs, we can very conveniently get a bomb refill that's just right here. We make our way to fight with these two Armos. Also, it sounds like the Centro tried to shoot me back there. Kind of interesting, even though he's way off screen. Centro always tries. <laughs> I've definitely seen a few clips of someone who like gets the boss key and then just instantly gets shot by the yeah, central. The central is really <laughs> shooting just directly uh, through the room. Literally trying everything, especially in like other routes, other scenarios. You're actually on low HP because you want to death warp after the BK, like in 100%. And there, the central can be really mean and reset like all the progress you did, almost. Um, but you know, in this case, we don't we actually use the normal way to get back. Yeah, and a lot of other routes, you typically end up going to where the boss door is first, so you can save the statue near there and then do a death warp back. All right, so here we just kind of have to follow the speed of the minecart. And then, but thankfully once we're over here, we can use the whip to quickly get it back over here. And then Fi's going to be like, hey, did you know that there's a boss door here? <laughs> yeah. I bet you didn't know that there's a boss door here. This is the boss door. Wow. Well, I mean, Very understandable. All, all the other ones, we like opened them up, you know? Like, sure. Maybe really she was worried. like, oh, this one, this one's closed. You actually yeah, yeah. have to open it. Yeah. Wait, wait a moment here. <laughs> this boss door is also one of the only flags in the game, or like it's, it's linked to one of the only flags in the game that you can't really RB at. Yeah. Which is why we pretty much always have to get the boss key, or we do always have to get the boss key for the linear mining facility. All right, now it is time for Moldorak. 
So I'm gonna essentially just push Moldorak back here. Well, the Moldorak attacked kind of quickly, so I'm gonna have to push him back a little bit more here. And then, as I'm pushing him back, I'm gonna continuously use the Slingshot uh, to stun his eye, and then do two hits on each eye uh, per cycle, so that the eyes stay open and I can hit them an extra time. Until the last time when I can do three hits, and then by just doing stabs really quickly, after the center eye becomes vulnerable, we can just easily defeat Moldorak. And that's why I backed Moldorak up all the way, because if Moldorak is against the wall, he can't, like, back up any further after you stab him. You can get those consecutive stabs in. So, uh, yeah, that is Lene Remining Facility. This yep. is also the longest cutscene in the entire run, so you're a donation. Wowee! Here's five dollars from Fastest the One, who says, "Not the chandelier, Jim. How could you?" In all seriousness, good luck on the rest of the run and the blindfolded demise. Thank you very much. Also, hope everyone enjoys the vibrating Wii Remote sounds. Oh, that's my favorite song. I know. It... <laughs> okay, so this car container we actually will collect. Um, Mostly just because it's nice to have nine hearts at the end of the run for, like, the final boss gun. Yeah. That's um, very tough. And this is where we need the bow. So, uh, in this room, you normally need to use the beetle to hit the time shift stone that's in the center of the room. Uh, the slingshot does not shoot far enough to hit it, so the only other option, if you don't have the beetle, is to use the bow. And also, yeah. the bow is significantly faster at hitting it than the beetle, so... Yeah. It's so very good to have that. Now we're just gonna damage down for more bit and have a long ride over to get the harp. It'd be a good moment for another donation. Yep. Sure thing. Here's fifty dollars from Little Baby Gator, who says, "Hey, listen, put this blindfold on and fight Ganon. Trust me, it'll go great." <laughs> I'm sure it'll be fine. All right, so here we have another cutscene skip, similar to the one that we did at the beginning of the run, where we have like a two-frame window for it, uh, except we only save about 15 seconds with this nice. one, and you don't save any time if you jump into the void, so... Uh. <laughs> Oops, but... Yeah, I think it was, you know, uh, sometimes the direction, depending on which frame you get, um, is different when you do it, like, side up out, so... I think yeah, it was just so that, um, that one just gives like a small phi text, basically. Yeah. All right, well, we beat both of the dungeons in Lanayru, so we're done with Lanayru for this run. I guess uh, now, you know, Song of the Hero is up next, Jim, you know. I hope you're ready for all the stuff that we have to do there. Oh, yeah, um, definitely. Yes. <laughs> All, all of yes, that. one of the dungeons in the game is Skykeep, and obviously, as we all know, you need to get the Song of the Hero if you want to access Skykeep. Yeah, I mean, in order to have the trial open, you would normally, you know, get all the songs, but... Or, <laughs> you could talk to the guy in the Lumpy Pump. Exactly. Yeah, that works a lot better. But the RBM we did about an hour ago, uh, where we talked to that NPC in the Lumpy Pumpkin, uh, right after we started our file, happens to correspond with the trial gate here being open. So, yeah, yeah that single RBM saves like 50 minutes. Mm -hmm. uh, because none of the Song of the Hero is uh, yeah. a dungeon, so we don't want to have to do any of it. Very nice. Very kind of that customer. Now, not a nice Silent Realm. This time around's a little more fun. Yeah. You get to do some cool stuff. And so we also have not collected a light fruit yet. Um, the first light fruit that you collect ends up playing a cutscene. Uh, so we want to try to avoid collecting light fruit in this trial, and then there's one that I want to collect in the Elden trial to just, like, just waste the least amount of time. Yeah. Uh, with collecting a light fruit. Thankfully, they're like pretty easy to avoid in this trial, though. Yeah, not like the Ellen trial. <laughs> the I Ellen tried to trial does it its best to uh, have the life fruits like in your way, like right there on the box where you have like no choice but to get it. 
and the Elden Trial has them old, old. Oh wow, I didn't want to do that. That was later. weird. Yeah. All right, we'll do it the regular way, I suppose. Then. Yep. So There's a small just... time save you can have there by jumping onto like the later part of the ledge here, but I like screwed it up. So. Yeah. Link was not having it today. Ow. Got a little too eager there. That was fine. Probably yeah. be okay. You know, we want to make it a little bit scary, you know, so. <laughs> <laughs> and now because the cycle is messed up, we have to run into that guy also. Yeah, but we already saw the um, statues activate, so it's not that big of a deal anymore. Uh, so, like, whenever you get into like a different sector, actually, this is also right here. We the boy waking water doesn't isn't actual water; it's just normal ground that just activates the guard, uh, the guardians. So we can actually use it to run across uh, Skylabs and quickly get to the other side and get the tears there. Yeah, and whenever you trigger the guardians, if it's like guardians you already have seen uh, that um, when when you wake them, then you don't get the cutscene of them awakening. So it's not that big of a deal to have it happen again then. And so here we can kind of just jump through that fence because it doesn't have collision from the side. So nice little like pseudo flip. And then we only have a few more tiers to collect. We got this one, and then we have the one all the way on top of the tower. And then, uh, if I never if I did it all fast enough, um, we can easily avoid the one watcher that like circled around. Uh, the top here. Yeah, he's like way off on the right side. And then after we plug this here, I want to get a small hop off of the ledge here. If we do like a regular jump and like jumps all the way down to where the trial gate is, he gets like stunned for like a little bit. So faster to do just a uh, little hop there and then get a roll jump off of the lower ledge. And this gives us the Stone of Triumphs. Which we can, of course, use to enter the Skykeep dungeon. Yes. And also, a side note, the reason why we do Skykeep right now, we, we technically still have Fire Sanctuary um, on our list of dungeons, but the reason we do Skykeep right now is in order to enter a Fire Sanctuary, we actually want two bottles with us because there's going to be two frogs we want to water. And um, the only two fast accessible bottles uh, is one in Seal Temple and the one in the Bazaar. And the one in Seal Temple, we never go, we just skip the Seal Grounds and the Seal Temple and everything. But after you beat Skykeep, you actually get put into the Seal Temple. So that's a quick way to get that bottle, allowing us to enter a Fire Sanctuary with two bottles. All right, Skykeep. Very cool dungeon. Um, does break the two RBM cycle. There's only one RBM we do in Skyview. Mm -hmm. uh, but it is a pretty long one, and it's actually one we've seen before because we just happened to want the exact same scene flag as another one that we did previously. So it'll look very familiar. <laughs> Scarily familiar, yes. So. This is also the only dungeon where they force you to get the map. Uh, so, gotta get the map. Makes sense to make the puzzle a little bit more clear. Yeah. Thank you for cool. orienting us. I've been lost this entire run. Yeah. <laughs> You're welcome. Yes. It's a very cool concept of a dungeon. We're moving the rooms around in order to get to the triforces that are in three different rooms across this dungeon. So we organized the rooms in such a way that we have uh, the Skyview Temple room, the Linear Mining Facility room, and the uh, Courage Trial room all lined up for us right here. Uh, and this is the layout that we want because um, the first trial that we will, or the first piece of the Triforce we're going to get is actually the Courage piece. 
Uh, even though normally you need a small key, or the one small key in the dungeon before you can get it, uh, the RBM that we're going to do is going to circumvent the need for that small key. Okay, so here in the Skyview room, uh, you can use the bow to unlatch this rope, and then swing across using the whip. I do want to kill these uh, pyrups on the other side of the room to make sure that they don't kill me as I swing across on the rope up there. Yeah, use the claw shots to get across here. And then use the gust bellows on these last platforms. A lot of item usage in uh, just even this first room of the dungeon. Which is why we don't want to do Skykeep until, you know, it's one of our last dungeons. And these are basically all items that we get. And then here we have a void, so it's faster to die into the void instead of on the regular ground. All right, let's see where Jim goes for this back in time. Might be very familiar. So, Link is very hungry once again. Oh no. Uh, so this is going to be yet another trip to uh, the Lumpy Pumpkin. Uh, One would think safe. he'd just buy enough to have leftovers at this mm. point. Well, I don't know how many yeah. leftovers you can have for collateral damage. Yeah. <laughs> I think that's called debris. <laughs> <laughs> that's true. Oh, no. Oh. Yeah, I, I accidentally started file one when I wasn't supposed to. Yeah. Uh, yeah. We don't want to start it until after we die, because then we get that cutscene as we just saw right there, which is not uh, very desirable. Yes. Actually, it's off Bloxy, unfortunately. <clears throat> I but yeah, it wasn't very far in. One one would hope that uh, the 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 barkeeper has replaced the chandelier again, and all the trouble is uh, hopefully all right that we caused. You know, we just bailed after last time. You know. All right, so we're not going to select file one this time until I start that. Yeah. Just uh, file one just happened to have a scene flag that will trigger the um, cutscene that you just saw last time when you're like not in the air. All right, time. and now time for another diving sequence. Yeah. So we'll probably have time for like two or three donations. Love to hear it. Well, in the spirit of coming back to things like an hour later, here's $25 from J-Dude, who says, Great job on the circles. Now a PB is guaranteed. A uh, donation to Blindfolded Demise, which I hope y'all are ready. We also have $30 from Jade Miniboo, who says, I wish the best of happy Jade luck on your run, Jim. I'm going to give towards Blindfolded Demise, but don't forget Blindfolded Tantalus, too. And when you meet the spicy meatball, make sure to tell him I'll be there to eat him. Jim W. <laughs> I hope we did all of that, right? That that's yes. that was a checklist. Yes. We completed yes, we those. Did that. Perfect. We Scaldera is sometimes referred to as the spicy meatball because he just kind of looks like a meatball that might be spicy. <laughs> <laughs> well, he's on fire. I, I think he yeah, might true. be a little extra spicy. <laughs> Speaking of extra spicy, it's time to cause more collateral damage in the Lumpy Pumpkin. How could poor you? Poor guy. He just put it up again. Listen, it's not my fault he has the scene flag that we want. <laughs> you need to make him angry. That poor guy. He won't remember it anyway. It's fine. <laughs> oh, nice rupee. Oh, nice rupee. You had to take his money, too. Yep. Everything was there, you know? And now we're just out without repaying anything. Oh well. He'll make do, okay. I'm sure. Yeah. Did any of that really happen? <laughs> this room is certainly happening. Y'all gaslighting me now? <laughs> I mean, we keep going back to the title screen. Is this run even making any progress? <laughs> True. I'm always seeing Skyloft. I don't know. All right. 
So in the Lenaver Mining Facility room, uh, we have some cool stuff that we get to do. Uh, so we're only going to take this orb uh, as far as to uh, um, get rid of a barbed fence uh, that is in our way up here. Uh, normally you want to take the time shift orb through the entire room uh, because it's used to get rid of the barbed fence that's in front of some uh, bow switches. But we can actually just kind of still hit these bow switches, even though they're behind like the barbed fence anyway. So this one we can just hit from underneath. We have the correct angle. And then the five others that we're going to encounter, we can hit uh, from in front because the arrows travel so fast in this game um, that the arrow can hit both the barbed fencing and the eye switch that's behind it in the single frame. And when that happens, uh, the arrow just, uh, or like the eye switch takes priority and still counts it. Uh, but you can only do this at like specific distance intervals away from each of the eyes, so that's why I was getting into specific positions for those first two. And then these last three very conveniently just work all from that same position in the back of the corner there. Alright, so now we're gonna move the power room down in front of, of the entrance room. Got another good bonk in for F-Tab that was clearly <laughs> intentional. I definitely yes, meant yes. to do that. Boy, now the fighting gauntlet for the courage room. You know, oh we boy. actually, we need a small key. Hmm. Nah, I don't think we do. Yeah, I think we can we can make do. But Fi will Master, tell us. Look. You know. Behind those bars that totally exist. There's a trial gate. Oh, you need to go through here. Okay. Hmm. Looks like, alright. <laughs> I'm gonna run through. And now, Fi, yay, you made it! <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so that skips having to reorganize. Oh, yeah, it skips the whole courage trial for one, which is like a minute. Yeah. Um, and then it also skips having to reorganize the puzzle of the dungeon a bunch of times and like going through the dread fuse fight for the small key. So, uh, yeah, we can go collect the other two pieces. So, like we just did about a moment ago, uh, we moved the power trial at the power room uh to be before the entrance room so if we go back through the sky or through the linear mining facility room and through the sky view room um we can just get to that very easily now unfortunately the power trial is like kind of boring uh it's very slow it's basically this series of meandering lava rivers very slow moving lava rivers that you have to make these platforms to move across on uh, so... Yeah, just kind of unfortunate. Oh, no. If you're playing casually, of course. Since this is a <laughs> speedrun, there's naturally a way that we can skip it. Um, and this is, uh... One of the only out-of-bounds flips that we can do without back in time in this game. Uh, this is going to be a plot shot vine clip. Where basically, if we stand right up against some vines and then clock up far enough to the right, uh, we can actually just kind of clip through the vines. And conveniently, there just happens to be a floor below this entire room. We can just run across the entire floor to the other side and then use the clock shot again to grab onto some vines up top here. And this skips the entire trial if I can find where the entrance is. At least. <laughs> Ever is not cooperating. So, very cool clip. I believe that was discovered like one day after the game came out, so we've basically never done that room. I've even heard a lot of people say that like on their first casual playthroughs they like knew about this and were just doing this in this room because this room is so boring. Yeah. It's a lot of yeah. platform writing. <laughs> and it's also pretty easy to do, like it's not hard to do that clip at all. Yeah. Alright, so now the wizard room uh, is conveniently facing the direction that we can link up to this room right here. We can just immediately go in. Alright, so this room has a time shift orb and a bunch of... Uh, Bunch more arrow switches that we're supposed to hit. Except it also has sand in it. 
Um, so the first switch that we have to hit, we can actually do uh, a little bit of a weird positioning trick to hit the arrow switch um, from down below instead of having to climb all the way back up here after we throw the time shift on where we want it to be. So we get rid of the barbed fencing with that, and then we stand right here and aim precisely. We can hit the arrow switch just like that. Uh, without having to go back up. And then we want to bring the time shift orb most of the way into here, but not quite all the way so that we skip spawning some enemies. And then we do a trick here called a break slide, which allows us to move quickly in quicksand uh, to get over here just a smidgen quicker. Link also wants to climb up. Yep. Surprisingly, yeah. this is the only place in the run where break sliding is used in pretty much every other run. There's at least a few more places where we get to use break sliding, but doesn't really work out for uh, this route. Yeah. At least there's one place we can you can see it. So last thing that's left is placing the time shift orb at the right place, and then you can clash it over. Oh. Um, and that way we can uh, get to the Triforce. Yeah, unfortunately, I just threw it a little too close to the ledge. When, yeah, I, when Link throws the time shift orb, he also moves forward a little bit, yeah. so it's just too close. And then trigger an auto jump. No. Oh my goodness, right. <laughs> Just want to show more brake slides off. Apparently, yeah. yeah. Actually, this is actually this, this is actually yeah yeah this is yeah. We'll just respawn up here. Yeah, yeah I, I forgot that if uh, if you jump above quicksand, Link's speed will get hindered in the air above quicksand also because yes, that makes logical sense, right? They really the game really does not want you moving quickly. Yeah. This run was supposed to make sense. <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, fair enough. Yeah. Fair, fair, fair. Yeah, of all the illogical things in this room that I have to complain about, it's this mechanic of the game. <laughs> Prevent you from skipping things. How dare they? Alright, so that is it for Skykeep. Means there is only one dungeon left. Mm hmm. The convenient place here in the sealed temple so we can get the bottle. And then we're done with that. We actually also obviously have to empty it because um, can't really can't really get water into a bottle that already has stuff. It would be pretty funny if the frogs just accepted revitalizing potions. Yes, that would actually be funny. <laughs> <laughs> but they don't. They need bottled water. Yes. The next step is actually getting more crystals. Um, and this time actually kind of for the use of having crystals. Um, because uh, we want to get a specific reward from Pat Patro that we, because every uh, reward from Patro gives you a flag as well. Um, and we actually want the first reward, which is having five crystals. Right now, um, we only did uh, like three crystals RBM, so we only have three crystals max. Um, and getting two singles is a little bit too long. But we have met Petro and in turn saved Keekwheel, which is the which is the kid that gun that gets missing, starting the side quest normally. And then we slept today at the very start after getting the tunic. Um, which means that we can talk to her mother here in this room and get five crystals from her for saving her daughter. From the very scary man. And these five crystals are gonna allow us to get the reward. And it's important that we get it on 5.3 here. Because we want Skyloft flags on 5.3 now. It has been in Elden and Farron, and now it's in Skyloft back. Um, which is nice. And I also have to tell you sad news. Because we're actually going to have to kill File 2 soon. It has long helped us with the Scala flags while File 3 had to do other stuff in Elden and Farron. But now uh, we actually need the file space. 
So soon we have to say goodbye to Fail 2. It's a nice run. But first we get another bottle here and go to Elden. And the bottle lady's like, what? You don't have a bottle yet? <laughs> you have an empty bottle in our inventory. <laughs> yes. Yeah, so those two bottles are pretty fast to get and convenient to get with this route. And we'll also see that the Sky Keep is just, or the northern part of Skyloft, just completely gone now. Yes, Layer 8. Hey. Shoutouts to Layer 8 for the donation earlier. Yes. I didn't know that map layers had wallets, but it's really convenient <laughs> that they do. For sure. It's I mean, each one has charity. a specific amount of rupees you can get. <laughs> Which ones actually have the wallet upgrades? Do we know that? Uh, <laughs> I, mean, I, think, I think that's, yeah, that's kind of probably the one layer inside the house. Yeah. Which would be either layer zero or layer one, Yeah. I'm guessing. Yeah. Can we get some donations from either layer zero or layer one then? <laughs> 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 Come on, it's for a good cause. Hmm. You're hoarding all these wallets. <laughs> yes, so uh, in order to get to Fire Sanctuary, we need to do Elden Trial. In order to need Elden Trial, we need to open Elden Trial. Which, because we don't, we can't get the song, uh, really, uh, we do back in time for it. And that's actually the reason we got the five crystals, so we can get the five crystal reward from Patrol. And it's also the moment we have to say goodbye to Fell 2. Well, we kept copied over on 5.3 and um, shortly after 5.3 will be deleted to make some space. Um, gonna bonk 5.1. Five, 5.1 five, is now in Elden because we just got there, so that's the perfect, you know, it's, it's how the route really smoothly goes over, like right before we had 5.3, all the Elden stuff, but now we actually landed in Elden and now 5.1 has all the Elden stuff and 5.3 Two or three has the Skyloft stuff. And now we can. If I won, also has the patrol door open, and we can just enter patrol. Give him five crystal, graduate crystals, and um, also get the flag for that. It's important that we enter with Fell 2 because Fell 2 has the five crystals that we got. Yeah, we don't want to select file one too quickly, otherwise things will not. Yeah. For this specific RBM. And now we have the flag set for the Ellen trial to be open, but it actually needs to reload. So we do a death warp actually here. And now we can get the fire shield earrings. It's definitely the the weirdest trial when it comes to routing because it doesn't have like a nice circle or anything that we can go. But it still can be done very fast, with the right routing. Yep, so this is the final trial. Yeah. It's also the longest one. Um, because as Pepper mentioned, there's not really like a good way we can go in a circle. We kind of have to go off in a bunch of like branching loops. Uh, here and there, where we like sort of come back to the center intermittently. Yeah. Might be a good spot for donations while we watch Jim do a very nice movement. Yep. Do you have time for a fun longer one? Yeah, yep. for sure. We have ten dollars from Bai. And I'll try my best. But Bai says, Master Hank, I have important information. A message from the goddess has awakened deep within my memory. The goddess intended this message for you, Jet. These are her words. They who seek the incentives listen well, for I am guiding you from the edge of estimated time. You should seek a set of course for a donation immediately. When your donation is full, your spirit will grow and the Prevent Cancer Foundation will be entrusted with a new power. I recommend donating immediately. Thank you, Fi. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Thank you, Fi. Time for I any guess, more? Yeah, we can, do, we can do a few more. Surely, surely. We have $20 from Ketchup Chips, who says, Blindfold Remote Combat, let's go! That was all caps. Thank you for making me yell. <laughs> <laughs> there will be some blindfolded Wiimote combat, indeed. Yes. 
which is very exciting. Also have $50 from Stinch, who says, always love to see gymnasts running Zelda at GDQ. Good luck on the run. Thank you very much. I can do one more. One more? Well, we have a nice, simple $50 from Party Cat. I love the idea of a cat in a party hat, saying, <laughs> love watching this event, and let's get that million dollars. Hi. I agree. Would be a very cool to see. Alright, so just continuing to make our way through this trial. Um, I guess we did kind of have that interesting side hop earlier. Uh, we got down onto the lower platform from somewhere we weren't supposed to be. Uh, for some reason, this tightrope is like. This tightrope is just weird. It feels more difficult than the other tightrope. I'm not really sure why. <laughs> Especially trying to like get onto it can be difficult sometimes. We'll need to and then one. here we want to specifically run up the ledge right there to avoid Link trying to grab onto it. If you run up too far to the left or right, Link will just grab the ledge uh, to climb up onto it. Let's see if the cycle here is good. Yep, yeah, looks like it's good. We can get past the watcher without having to wait. See how we left yeah. some um, tears over from our first. I mean, we just walked through here, but we left some tears over so we can quickly get our stamina, stamina refill and reset the timer, which is very convenient for us. Okay, this one. There we uh, let go of the vines intentionally and then like repressed A to grab onto them again. So we could drop enough, because just a single like flick of the Wii remote doesn't drop up far enough to get that one here. A few more tiers to collect uh, for uh, the sand slopes right here. We want to collect the lower one first because if we collect the one that's higher up, we can't get to the one that's lower because uh, just how the sand slopes work out. Because if you start if you start running on the sand slopes, you can run the sand slopes, and thankfully we don't need to run up too high to get the uh, other tier from here. So make sure we avoid the waking water. Then we can just turn around and slide the rest of the way down. Yeah, and that's it for the Elden Shrine. And what's actually very important here is um, the entrance on leaving the Elden Shrine. That's actually very, very, very important. Which is why we're going to immediately, after um, going to save and copy it over to the f uh, file we just made free. Which is also the reason we deleted um, File 3 to begin with, because copying uh, when you have like a file there actually gives you like an extra text box telling you, do you really want to overwrite this? Um, but since we deleted it in back in time, it's a little bit quicker. Yeah, and so this is uh, ultimately going to be setting up um, probably the most important, or like definitely the most important cutscene wrong work of the whole run. Uh, we specifically want uh, a file which uh, just came out of, I think it's Exit 5 in Room 2. Yes. Yeah. That is perfectly correct. So, copy file into file 3. This step is so important that it's like, if you accidentally forget to do this and enter a new area, uh, without doing this, you your run is just kind of over. So yeah, because don't forget to do this. We can't leave the trial again because it just disappeared. Yeah. So leaving the trial is a one-time thing. Um, and it just happened to be the exact uh, entrance we need and the exact room that we can reach. Because for cutscene run, we need both the right room and the right entrance. Um, otherwise, it won't work. Yeah, generally, as far as like cutscene wrong work values go, getting any entrance in room zero is pretty easy because all of Skyloft is room zero and it has like a ton of entrances. Um, but getting entrances in rooms one or two is a little trickier. Yeah. Which is a little unfortunate because all of the useful ones are in like room two. <laughs> yeah, unfortunately. So. Yeah. All right. Now it's time for. Uh, another trip to the Lumpy Pumpkin. Link has once again become hungry. Yep. 
But this time we're just gonna steal some stuff and that's it, you know? <laughs> this time there will unfortunately be no collateral damage. Yeah. Ah, <laughs> uh, well, you know. Yeah, so the setup is the same here, um, if you want to explain it ever. Well, yeah, I mean, it's, uh, again, we save our file to get our love wing and, you know, dive again with a tunic file. This time we actually have file 3 also as a tunic. Remember, we just copied it. So both file 1 and file 3 would work um, for this. And then after that, it loads. before it loads into the sky, we switch to file 2, because now file 2 is the file. For the, for the most of the part of the run, it was file 3, but now it's it's file 2, uh, because we just copied earlier file 3 to file 2. And that has a reason for the that we have file 3 now with a different file, but that will be explained later. For now, time to dive. Another dive. Our last dive to the Lumpy Pumpkin. Yes. Fortunately so. Yeah, so if we have another one donation that we can read right now. Can do. We have an apt donation for $50 from the files formerly known as 2 and 3. <laughs> and they would like to say, we still have so much more to offer. <laughs> This is in loving memory of files two and three. Yeah. We've replaced you. Obsoleted. Yes. Copied over. <laughs> Ice cold. Alright, so uh, this time we're actually going to get one of the two gratitude crystals that's here uh, on the lobby pumpkin. We're going to be getting the one that's outside near the shed. So we need to change it to nighttime and then leave with uh, file three here. Yeah. Any file just... that has met patrol um, will have to grab two crystals here. Because actually night sky layers don't crash. There's also only one. So what? Oh. Have we not collected there. Yeah, I think All it just right, well. kind of weirdly. That was weird. Time to do this again. <laughs> yeah. I think I, I somehow managed to get in between the pots. Yeah, I think it kind of being... like pushed the pots and pushed Link a bit, and then it was yeah. just... That's unfortunate. Yeah. Well... Maybe there's more dead files that want to spend money <laughs> while we do this bit. <laughs> I don't actually have more donations from files, but I do have huh. a couple from other layers. Oh, hey. Oh. Okay. Uh, specifically, there. one other layer, layer oh. one, would like oh. to donate $50 and say, Hey, gymnast, layer one here. I've been <laughs> trying to get you this donation, but somebody keeps stacking layers on top of me. Whoever is doing all this revert, there's fit magic needs to stop. It must be that darn prize wizard. Uh, and apparently, layer one was not done, for they donate another a $1,000. Oh, wow. And they just said, you got the big rupee back. <laughs> that, yeah, that's true, we did. Any more time? Ah, uh, yeah, we're just going to dive again, so. <laughs> <laughs> if we have more layers, let's hear them. <laughs> Wonderful. Uh, no more layers right yeah. now, but I have $50 from Atomi, who says, Always love to catch the Zelda runs, and Skyward Sword is always a wild watch. Very much agree. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I'm sure this, even after all the explanations that we've done, this run makes perfect sense. Yes. We also have $100 from Zan uh, Xanatos? Xanatos. I'm sorry, I can read. Ooh, who says, with all the back in time happening in this run, we should call this game Legend of Zelda Groundhog Day. <laughs> Would be pretty apt. <laughs> all right, once again, gotta sleep. I think he's tired. You can only express his gratitude once he's had a full night's rest. Yep. I'm the same. <laughs> yeah, so this RBM actually um, removes the big flames in front of Fire Sanctuary, allowing us to enter it. 
Because normally you would have to do this whole other quest where you would go back to Farron, get the um, get the big water pod, and bring that all the way over to the volcano summit to have it uh, water the big frog, which is very slow. So we skip that with that RBM, allowing us yeah. to just uh, water the two frogs. And it's not just slow, it's like impossible to do yes, that's with true. this rep. That's also <laughs> so. true. On top of that. Yeah. Because if yeah, you want to be able to use it for for this quest, you first have to use it, or you first have to like uh, free the water dragon from the basin by dumping some Skyview yeah. spring water on her. It's important that Jim is not missing the water here in the frogs. Um, because the big flag, the, the thing is, the big frog isn't watered, because that's actually a story flag. Just the big flames have been removed. But the game is smart enough to know that the big frog is not watered. So, the moment it sees that the big frog is not watered, it unsets that the flames are down. But for one place, like, because a reload is usually what updates things, for one um, load of this area, we actually have the flames down. So if we had to like reload this area by dying or leaving and re-entering by getting water, the flames would be back up and we had to redo the RBM. So very good that we can just um, get the two bottles here. Uh, makes it the uh, routing wise a little bit easier to get here and have the flames down. Now we're in Fire Sanctuary. Last dungeon. It's dungeon. So, Fire Sanctuary will be keeping with the theme of two RBMs per dungeon. Yep. Um, these are actually some of the like actual shortest RBMs. Yeah, for sure. Uh, in the game. Basically, we just have to start our file and then check a statue on Skyloft two times in a row. Different statues, though. Um, so it's, it's actually very convenient that these two RBMs are like the shortest ones possible. <laughs> yep. All the way, the flags are layout just happen to be very convenient sometimes, and very, very inconvenient sometimes. <laughs> really depends. I also have to make sure that I do these on file 3 and not yes. on file 1, because file 3 is the actual gameplay file that we have right now. We're currently playing on, currently playing on file 3, so start and check, and then checking a statue also sets a steam flag. And then we can commit the flag by revealing these hidden red rupees that you didn't know about until now. Yeah. That one is particularly hard to know, because it's very hard to hit. <laughs> also, just a small technical thing, but whenever we like are bombing Link to reduce his health, um, we always want to make sure that he gets blown up in like a sideways animation because he gets up from that animation faster than if he gets blown forward or backward. Alright, the other statue we're going to do is the Lower Academy statue, um, which requires us getting past a gate, so we will bonk with um, either file 3 or file 2. Um, both work here, actually. Um, and then we can go through and start and check the statue. And now, we won't do an RBM, but we will do another back-in-time section. Um, and it's gonna use the third statue on Skyloft, actually. Um, but we're going to do a bit work. And it's been a while since the last bit work, so... Let's reiterate that a bit. So, bit warp basically means we save and start at the same time, which leads to um, the game applying the coordinates of the statue to the map and the the file was on. So, file three right now is in Fire Sanctuary, and we're going to apply the coordinates of the Upper Academy statue to Fire Sanctuary, which kind of puts us. Um, far away from the spot we were um, onto the bridge, Fire Sanctuary. But it's actually, uh, because Fire Sanctuary is also parted into two maps, it's actually the wrong map we're on, which means certain things are wrong and not, are not loaded, which we can abuse to go deeper into the dungeon. 
Okay, so uh, this is gonna look a little weird. There's just nothing in this room. <laughs> yeah. Except the door, which we can open back up to get to this room. And then the McCobin on the right is gonna fall down because his position is wrong. <laughs> Poor guy. And get rid of these and do a tricky maneuver around this pillar. Like this, and then unfortunately I'm kind of forced to take four hearts of damage here because I don't have a set of plots. So now we're two hearts for the rest of Fire Sanctuary. It's a bit scary because the last time we saved is on Skylof just now because a bit save does remember your respawn point to be at the statue, which would be a little unfortunate. Um, we have to have, to have we have to do something. Uh -oh. oh wow. Okay. Oh, okay, thanks. Hello there. <laughs> mm -hmm. You can see Hero Mode also uh, can allow you to get a bunch of treasure with. <laughs> nice shoulder case there, Jim. Um, yeah, of course. Which uh, is like nice for like one hundred percent or the play uh, categories that needs um, that needs treasure to unlock certain things like upgrades. And now there's gonna be the evil keys here, um, which can be very annoying. Uh, we can take one hit, but we can't take two hits as we go up here. So it's often easy to just uh, smash them. Hopefully the others are just ignoring us, so we don't have to worry about them. And so now we see what the RBMs did. Yeah, so those two RBMs earlier, um, one of them defeats the Moldor mini-boss here on the way to the boss key, and the other one opens up the iron bars um, on the way to the boss key. So, like, if we just tried to do the one of opening up the iron bars, the game is smart enough to know that if the Moldorm's not defeated but the iron bars are raised up, then that probably means that you, like, died to the Moldorm, and so it re-puts the iron bars down when you enter the room if you just try to RBM the iron bars being up. So we have to RBM both the Moldorm being defeated and the iron bars being up if we want to uh, properly get the boss key. Probably gonna do a safety save here. Yeah. Um, just because the last place is still Skyloft and that's very, very far back. So it's uh, just um, in the spirit of a no reset run. Very smart to save there. You're telling me not every save has an associate RBM? Not not this one. <laughs> I mean, we could just do one for fun, I guess. Oh, cool! Yes. <laughs> How much will chat donate for an extra RBM? <laughs> Let me just see what I can find here now. <laughs> yeah, donate with your favorite scene flag. Oh, you just give us give us the favorite number. <laughs> We'll find the number and see what we can do. Alright, so Girahim 2, uh, kind of the same as Girahim 1, except now he has two swords. Uh, so he can block from twice as many directions. He also has some different attacks uh, that he can do, and there's a bit of RNG with uh, the moves that he does. Ideally, we would have gotten some different moves at the beginning there. Ah, uh, what? Okay, that was weird. I thought that was a vertical. You did hit him, but Spin, he was but like, yeah. nah, I'm gonna hit you too. I still... Oh well, yeah, because I, I ended up hitting like his actual swords, because I guess like wasn't turned around the whole way. It's probably the issue. Sounds, it looked like it did damage to him, but I guess it was kind of weird. Uh... Well, but this is why we safety save. Exactly. <laughs> Just in case stuff like that happens. There's gonna always be weird stuff like that. Let's try that again, except this time we'll have six hearts. And so after this dungeon, the only thing that's that's left is to get to the past in order to beat the game. But we actually haven't done anything to do that. We have not raised the gate of time. Uh, we have not opened the gate of time. Any jump, please? <laughs> yes. What is this RNG? Right, wow. Thank you. Uh, yes, so we have not raised the gate of time, we've not opened the gate of time, um, and that means we need to find a way to do all of that quickly or skip it all. And. Okay. I've never. Wow. 
he really is moody today. Yeah. <laughs> He's like, nah, I'm not jumping. Yeah, so we need to find a way to um, skip all of that. And that's actually where... This... Apparently Garrickham heard that today was the GDQ run. Wow. Decides Wait, to give us... literally crazy. Yeah, some of the worst RNG possible. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Yurihim's really trying to give us more time to doing? hit that million and watch that Mario Kart ra uh, run. <laughs> <laughs> what is he doing? That's crazy. I literally... That yeah, must that, have been the worst RNG ever. I, that, is, that is definitely the worst RNG I've had in, like, years. That was crazy. That right there. <laughs> he was like, I'm just gonna annoy you <laughs> as much as I can. Anyway... Um, so we're going to collect this heart container so that we have nine full hearts uh, going into the final boss gauntlet. Because mm -hmm. we're actually going to be able to do all the stuff that needs to get to the past in one back in time, which is skipping it all. Because yes, we actually found a way to skip the gate of time. If you've may, may, you may or not, may not have seen the elusive glitches video of Gymnast. The get of time is very hard to skip, um, but luckily we did find a way through cutscene wrong warp. Because we can actually trigger the cutscene um, where you open, like after you open the gate of time, there's a cutscene that plays and that puts you into the past. And we can play the cutscene with cutscene wrong warp in back in time, which means that we will be uh, put into the past after we did it successfully. But so conveniently, these flames are back now, so we can yes. use them for back in time. Yep. But unfortunately, also, file 1 has the right entrance. That's why we did like the whole copy, copy stuff. We're right now playing on file 3. And file 1 has all the stuff we need, but we want file 3 in the past. So we'll have to make cutscene wrong warp a little bit more tricky to perform and add um, another section to it, which is going to be a file loop. Um, but first, let's let's get there first. Let's get first to the Seal Temple and then talk about it again. So first, we need to save another Love Wing file here. Um, it's important that we don't save file 3, because that would also change the entrance. So, anything else goes. Uh, we'll choose file 2 here. Um, and now we do the same thing, that we go to back to the sky, but... And we're gonna dive to the Farron Pillar, but this time we actually have the harp. Um, and when you, for the first time, enter Farron Pillar after you get the harp, an enormous story event, it's gonna trigger Groose landing in Steel Grounds. So, be ready for a little bit of Groose um, towards the end of the run. So that's nice. After um, three hours, there's finally some Groose. Yeah. That's what we've all been waiting for. He is so kind and gives us um, the right layer for Seal Temple. Which is actually layer 2. For anyone wanting to, you know, know the numbers. So he, after we finish talking to him, he'll set the flag that um, allows us to load Seal Temple in layer 2. And it's the same thing we are not allowed to reselect because it's a story flag. Re uh, selecting anything would um, reset the flag, so we have to make sure we stay um, and we're gonna use the copy menu here, because while well, you're in the copy menu, you don't really, you don't select any files, and you've got a, f a few free A presses. And now inside, um, we're going to trigger the getting of the Battle of the Goddess, and in turn raising the Gate of Time cutscene here, which basically gives us a free reload, still staying on layer two here. Um, but we're gonna reload with file 1, meaning we have bombs allowing us to die, allowing us to do the cutscene wrong warp. And as I said, this time we want to open the splash screen as well as skip the cutscene in the right order in order to get file 3 file duped to file 1. And this is gonna be tricky. Okay. Oh, nice! Let's go! First try. That is... Unironically, the hardest trick in the run, so of course it happens at the very end. Yes. Um, Let's go. And so, I mean, like, on, like when you say it out loud, uh, that trick is 
you have a two frame window for the cutscene wrong work, followed by a four frame window a little bit later for the file dupe, which doesn't sound too bad, but my consistency with uh, like that trick is pretty significantly worse than my consistency with just cutscene wrong warps in general without the file dupe, even though the file dupe has doubled the window of the cutscene wrong warps. Anyway, uh, this is the end of the game right here now. <laughs> yes. But we so, only have Master Sword. So yeah. this makes this fight actually pretty annoyingly difficult because sometimes a random Bokoblin will block, but every other Bokoblin will attack. If you had the true Master Sword, then it would break the, the guard always, so they couldn't guard. So they really like doing their best to like annoy you a bit, but you know, okay. two, two damage is pretty good for that. It's just very difficult. <laughs> but yeah, very nice that we got the cutscene run up. We basically, by opening the tile screen while the trick happened, we loaded the information of file three as always when you open the splash screen, but it applied to file one. So we now are on file one, but with the information of file three. All right, good board cool. skip. Nice. This does force us to take two hearts of damage because we don't have a sail clock, but. Uh... Obviously, it skips a whole revolution around yes. the spiral, so it saves a bunch of time and is worth it. Yeah. As long as we don't get like trolled here by the rest of the yeah. enemies, but I think we'll be fine. Yeah, and usually you it's not unlikely that you take damage in the other part as well. So. Oh my goodness. Oh wow. Okay, we're All making right, well, it now interesting. Now we have to actually be careful. Yes, so there's going to be some aimbot archers coming up that um, just like to be rude. So we're gonna try to avoid getting hit by them. Nice, oh boy. This is yeah, scary. we took like the, <laughs> the super safe route <laughs> through those guys. They are very scary. Mm -hmm. And now there's still the last part of Horde. Um, we have one Bacopolin, Bacopolin here that's named Billy because he often survives and gets a hit in. Um, or at least has in the past. That's why he got a name. Um, let's hope he's not here today. Oh he God. didn't show up. Really far up for some reason. Yep. Um, also, by the way, the, the black mist that's right there, that's not supposed to be there normally, but it's only there because we never did anything into the grounds and never did the first um, Spyro. And it actually like used the same uh, like sealed grounds again for this part because it's basically the same map. So it has this interesting black mist. Alright, so this is the first phase of the Gearhim 3 fight. Uh, pretty simple, we just basically wail on Gearhim and then shield bash his attack and then knock him down. Yep. Yeah, just do that one more time. Oh, he got me. Oh, yeah, but well. this is fine. Um, yeah. The game sort of has like a checkpoint. Uh, system for these final fights. So, because we defeated the Horde, um, mm -hmm. we can just like instantly start the Gear Him 3 fight again here. Might be a good moment to say that everyone is free to join the Discord for the speedrunning or the randomizer community. We're all happily welcome new people. Uh, I think there's a lot of interesting runs from in randomizers or the Wii or even the HD um, are all unique and interesting and definitely, you know, worth testing out if something you like. So feel free to just uh, look for the Discord, search on the internet. Once these are, there's all the Discords and you can join. Yeah. And of course, uh... As this run is about to finish up, thank you very much, Pepper, for uh, doing the co-commentary here with me today. And thank you very much, Pippi, for reading all those lovely donations that we had. Yep. Gotta thank, thank chat you. for sending them. Yep. And yeah, thank you very thank much, Jim, chat, for, for playing the run. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> for doing the cutscene run wars. Yes. I uh, also want to give pretty big shoutouts to uh, Azer67, who uh, is also a pretty big force in uh, like 
the Skyward, or in the complicated mess that is Skyward Sword routing. Uh, he's done a lot of work just documenting scene flags and figuring out clever ways to go about routing the game. Uh, in addition to Pepper, who's also the other like routing powerhouse uh, in the community. Also, thanks to the Black Mist, we know that Girahim is actually evil. Oh, yes, the, the Black Smoke is actually foreshadowing that Girahim is evil, that's correct. Yes. Because, you know, all right. can get But now it's time for the moment you guys have all been waiting for. Yes, a real blindfolded fight. Yes, this one will actually yes. happen. Oh. Yes, and for, like, uh, hats up, uh, on the second phase, um, when you did, do the final strike, is where going to be time, so... As a heads up, I can't really talk because Jim has to hear, so... Be ready for the final strike. And blow. Nice first phase. Right. Good first phase. Alright, so if we do this well, time will be coming up in about 20-ish seconds. And time. time. Nice. Oh, and my headset fell off. <laughs> All right. Get back to hearing it. things. Okay, there we go. Hey. Hi. GG. Well, yes. So that was Blindfolded Demise. Um, interestingly, Demise is one of the only fights in the game that you can like actually reasonably do blindfolded. <laughs> Even though he's the final boss. He friendly enough does enough voice um, sound stuff in his attacks to do that. Also yeah. on the first when he's down the first time you can't actually final blow him, he'll get up too quickly. So that's why we knock him down two times. Yep. So uh, what was the final time on that? I didn't actually have a timer running. The final time was three hours, seven minutes, and forty three seconds. Alright. Still underestimate. For my standards, that wasn't a very good run, but that's why we have high estimates in case runs are bad, <laughs> or in case we make a lot of mistakes. You got Again, the just giving us though. more time to get in for that Mario Kart incentive. It was a very mm -hmm. kind thing of you to do. <laughs> oh, yes, yes, of course. That's, that's definitely what I did by missing a lot of those RBMs intentionally, <laughs> naturally. Everything was intentional. Exactly. <laughs> But uh, yeah, so we already did the shoutouts. Um, I don't think there's anything else for me, uh, I guess, other than you can find me at twitch.tv slash gymnast86. Um, you should find, you should find him. Yeah, it's where you <laughs> should find me. Yes. <laughs> um, I do 3D Zelda speedruns. That's my brand. Oh, that's what you'll see. But uh, yeah, do you, Pepper or Pippi, have anything else? Got it. It was very fun. We're very glad we to showcase something else on any percent for Skyward Sword. Of course we can though. That's cool. Alright, well uh yeah, thank you guys very much for watching and hope you guys enjoy the rest of GDQ. Keep on donating. All right, thank you everyone for watching and donating during that incredible and only a little bit not developer intended Skyward Sword All Dungeons run. Thank you so much for the blindfolded fight. That was a beautiful ending. But let's hear a couple more of those donations because unfortunately we never will have time to read them all. We do have $50 from Bronxosaur, who says, Is this the right foul? Is this just fantasy? Trapped in a sky loft, no escape from an RBM. Thank you, Bronxosaur. 
And one more, we have $50 from Handsome Skyward, who says, come on, chat, get that Mario Kart hype train. Those Wave 3 courses are too good to miss, and we don't have long to hit that million. I very much agree. Please donate towards those Wave 3 courses incentive. We're gonna get it. I believe in us. But I'll give you some time to get there. We've got a quick message to go to. So I'll be right back. Don't you go anywhere. And we are back, everyone. Thank you for sticking with us during the break. And thank you for sending in beautiful donations for me to read, like this $25 one from, I'm going to pronounce that, Leblumkin. Leblumkin? Something like that. <laughs> Who says, thanks, Gymnast86 and Pepperonicus for the awesome stream. And thanks to all the streamers and to GDQ for this event. Peace and love to everyone. And we do also have one more message to share with y'all today from our lovely partner event. We have a topical update. Mark your calendars because Frost Fatales is coming up February 26th through March 4th. 
the Frame Fatales community will be raising money for charity and spotlighting talented women in speedrunning. For more information about Frame Fatales, go to gamesdonequick.com slash Frame Fatales or type exclamation point FF in the chat right now if you don't want to wait. If you are a woman interested in joining the Fatales community, DM at Frame Fatales on Twitter or head to our website. And by the way, y'all should definitely tune in for the Frost Fatales event, especially if for some odd reason you like my funny little voice. It may or may not be back during that event. However, Unfortunately, this will be my time with y'all at this event today, but I have full confidence that Ruby Hart will take good care of y you all and the host desk for me. So with a heavy heart, I also say this will be my last host shift this event, but thank you, GDQ, so much for having me. Thank you, all my lovely donors, for trusting me with your amazing messages. You truly are wonderful, and I am so grateful to be able to be here with y'all. Keep the silly noises and generous donations coming. And now, I hear there's an interview. Celebremos la vida. Eh, me da la oportunidad de que podamos servir a las mujeres latinas de 40 en adelante para que puedan tener sus exámenes de prevención eh, de mama y citología. Cuando son diagnosticadas eh, emocionalmente es terrible. Cuando escuchas la palabra cáncer, usualmente pensamos que se terminó todo y que el reloj se paró porque casi todos tenemos una agenda que seguir y no queremos parar y las pacientes son parte de eso, los trabajos, eh, los niños, la familia, todo es más importante que ir a examinarse. Entonces eh, nosotros les llamamos, ya le toca su mamografía, tiene que venir a hacérselos, eh, eh, estamos pendientes, ¿no? Y, y creo que todos necesitamos a alguien que esté ahí porque usualmente con todo lo que hacemos a día a día nos olvidamos de nosotros mismos. What brought you to the clinic here for the first time? Yo vine, realmente vine por una pequeña bolita que traía en mi pecho, ¿no? Y de ahí me mandaron a hacer un examen porque lamentablemente no tenía la edad suficiente para hacerme la mamografía. Entonces creo que del grupo soy la más chica ahorita. Entonces la doctora me dijo de que me iban a hacer una, un sonograma. Entonces gracias a ese sonograma fue de que a mí me descubrieron lo que yo tenía realmente. Es un proceso muy caro, exámenes y todo. O sea, a veces uno la noticia le cae duro, ¿no? Pero a veces también uno piensa en lo económico, que aquí si uno no tiene seguro, no tiene, no tiene nada, ni una ayuda. O sea, eso va avanzando y quiera o no, uno necesita, ¿no? Entrar a qué a a tanto procedimiento que hay que hacer, exámenes y todo. Pero sí, en realidad, ella me habló de, del programa y me dice que no me preocupara y todo. Entonces fue como algo ya, un descanso más para mi cerebro, porque estar en eso, en la enfermedad y pensar lo económico es bastante duro, pero a mí me ha ayudado bastante el programa. Yo pienso que eh, es un milagro de que... De que de otras personas o de otras mujeres, ¿no? Que, que han pasado, ¿no? Su quimio, su radiación. Soy la más afortunada de, de que fue diagnosticada en el tercer stage y, y realmente fue un OA, ¿no? Que no, no tuve mucho, uh, no tuve radiación, no tuve quimioterapia, pero sí continúo con, porque no puedo dejarlo. O sea, de eso se trata, ¿no? De que uno tiene que continuar, continuar eh, y no dejarse. O sea, ahora ya es mi prioridad. Primero soy yo. What has been for you the best part of, of your job in working with people? Ayudar, ayudar a las personas, lo agradecidas que son con uno, eh, 
cada vez que logro que un paciente, sobre todo cuando un paciente es no puedo porque mi trabajo es más importante, o sea, el insistirle, el hablarle y lograr que ese paciente se haga su screening y salga negativo, eso para mí es muy satisfactorio. Gracias a ustedes por darnos la, para darme a mí la oportunidad y yo creo que así como yo, muchas mujeres queremos hablar o queremos agradecer ¿no? a ustedes por, por estar por estar, estar ahí con nosotros, sin conocernos, sin, sin saber nuestra situación, sin, sin ninguna discriminación, sin nada, están al lado de nosotros, ¿no? Y sobre todo es eso, el de no saben la magnitud de la tranquilidad que uno tiene al saber de que, de que hay organizaciones donde uno puede acudir, ¿no? Es solamente, es, tal vez sea una palabra que muy a menudo uno escuche decir gracias, ¿no? Pero es gracias del corazón. Al menos yo, muy agradecida. Agradecida porque realmente he, he visto a mis hijos crecer. No he tenido ninguna preocupación, no he tenido, eh, he amanecido tranquila. Y sobre todo esa tranquilidad que ustedes dan con, con esta fundación. Yo creo que eh, el que estén acá es que hace todo esto posible, ¿no? El que esté en, el que esté en la fundación de Prevent Cancer Foundation y que, es, que hayan personas como ustedes y todas las organizaciones que ayudan para el mismo propósito, que ponen su granito de, arien, de arena. Este, creo que eso es lo que hace posible que, que podamos continuar ayudando a estas pacientes. Hay algo que me olvidé de decir a esas mujeres que no se dejen, que continúe. Yo, a pesar de que pasé este proceso del cáncer, no, uh, mi esposo se fue. Me dio fuerzas para continuar y, y ayudar a muchas mujeres, ¿no? Así como yo, de poder continuar, ¿no? Porque no, no hay nada mejor que, que la vida. Ok, sounds good. Hello, awesome. Game's done quick. How is it going to all you wonderful cuties in chat? I'm so happy to be here with you today. My name is Ruby Hart and I'll be taking over as your host for the next few runs. I've got some great donations here. So uh, we've got one from Lucent Brush saying, hey, AGDQ, I had to donate again since I just found out that I'm cancer free. Here's to a wonderful 2023 and let's kill cancer like Jim killed Link often and, and, and in as many ways as possible, less than three. And that's $50 from Lucent Brush. Thank you so much for that donation and congratulations on the incredible news. And with that, it looks like we have our next run up. So Peas is going to be running Puyo Puyo Fever 2. Hara Hara, any percent normal. Take it away.